Yo, Dean, what's happening? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Superfly Radio Guy. What's up? What's shaking? Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the AI Learning Lab, attempt two tonight. See if we can get the algorithm to pick us up. It was a little stingy last time I went. Happy Friday night. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Jeffrey Wakeling, hey dude, I've learned so much from you and I appreciate you so much. I appreciate that, KT. That's why I'm here, hopefully hopefully making a difference for people, talking about AI, generative AI, why I think it's important, what it is, how it works, how to use it, how not to think about it. You can make money with ChatGPT. <laughs> you can think about it like that, but it's just a tool. It's It's... The most powerful tool ever put in the hands of humanity. Hey, Emilio's wife, we are back. I was doing a little sim racing, and some jerk crashed me at the end of a good qualifying lap. So I was like, Arr! so I'm back on. But I'm double fisted now. I've got iced beverages. It's going to be good. I don't know if my voice is any better. Now it looks like we got some folks coming in. Hey, everybody. Encourage more viewers to share. Um, yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're willing to, if, you, if you've if you got people that you think might be interested in AI uh, or you don't mind them thinking you're a weirdo for thinking about it, um, please share this. We'll get this out to as many folks as we can. I appreciate that. Double tap the screen. Get the little hearty hearts going. And um, we'll get started. These URLs beside me here, someone just sent me something. Thank you for that. I think it said Carla. Um, it's hilariously AI, but still impressive. Wait, what is? X or whatever it is. Oh, XAI. Yeah, whatever. Um, these things right here. Wait, let me. I got, I got white bleed coming onto my camera lens. I have a feeling my lenses are a little dirty. They've been dirty, dirty lenses. Those lenses are so dirty. All right. There's my undirty lenses. That looks a little better. That's mo better. So these URLs here, I'll talk about them in a bit. If you haven't played with ChatGPT or, or any of these generative AI tools, um, this list only used to have three things on it. And as of about 10 days ago, I added four more. So that's seven. That's seven. And so I, I would consider these kind of the seven, probably five major, you know, uh, majors and two minors. Although the one minor, the Pi.ai, the product right now is minor, but the company is major. It's So the company behind Pi.ai is Inflection. They just raised $1.3 billion for their Series B. Now they're going to spend about... Um, 900 million of that on GPUs, 22,000 GPUs. So they're making a giant, giant ass server farm to build. What they're what they're now calling they, they've they, they've come up with this new term called frontier models. Right? There's foundation models, which are the and the frontier models are the latest and greatest. You know, when you got 10,000 or more GPUs and you can train massive, massive large language models, then you're a frontier developer. So a lot of these, a lot of these companies are frontier. OpenAI is, Claude is, Anthropic is, Google is, Meta is, but Meta's given their shit away, which is really interesting. And then Inflection is as well. So um, if you have questions about generative AI, pop them in the comments below. Um, my background: I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I've been, I've started 12 or 15 companies in my day. I was an entrepreneur in the early days of the World Wide Web. So I've been through one of these. Um, technological revolutions from from the not from the ground up but from the very early days and uh, this one is like the early days of the World Wide Web like this year is very much for for my experience like 1994 when I first discovered the the World Wide Web and um, started an agency um, in the early days this is very much like that but like if if you multiplied it by a thousand in terms of the impact that these things are going to have and the speed with which they're coming. So, uh, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. <clears throat> I'm back. I was here before. I'm back. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. 
Da, 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 da. What is labs? Well, the AI Learning Lab is, this is the lab. Isn't it lovely? We've got books and photographs and baskets and uh, painting. <laughs> painting. <laughs> That's the lab. It's just the name of my channel. It's about learning. Learning uh, this stuff. Da 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 Oh, what about 11 labs? I can talk about that. We can talk about 11 labs for sure. Uh, 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 uh. Any updates to Pi? Um, I don't know when the last time you looked at it was. Pi is... The, the iOS app for Pi, if you put it in a conversation mode in your car while you're driving, um, Pi is really fun to talk to when you're in your car. <laughs> so... I don't think it's useful for doing things like research. It is connected to the internet, though, so that's useful. And you can talk to it, which is, it's a bit of a novelty, but if you're driving, like the idea of actually having a large language model that's connected to the internet that you can just go, hey, well, I'm headed toward the movies, what's playing? And it'll just tell you and do all that sort of stuff. I, I mean, I suppose Siri could have done that, but, um, but you know, you can ask it, large language model stuff. So I don't know if there's been an update to it, but they have raised a boatload of money. So I'm, I'm sure they got some, some stuff coming. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hello, everyone. Hello, Nancy. What about 11 Labs? I've played there with my clone voice. Yeah, 11 Labs right now is, is pretty good. Um, D-ID is pretty good. Synthesia is okay. Um, all of them are expensive. They're, they you just burn through credits really quick with that. So I think if you have kind of low volume, low fidelity projects where it doesn't really matter, like if you're trying to create a video a day for a TikTok channel um, or two videos a day, maybe you could probably do that without burning too much money. But if you're trying to, if you want to do like, um, go to ChatGPT and have it write a hundred scripts and then automate you know, going to 11 labs and making voices and then going to Canva and doing, you know, a hundred videos with, uh, what's, what's it called? Bulk create. Uh, that's going to get pretty expensive pretty quick. So I kind of feel like on the video stuff, the voice synthesis stuff, the simulated talking stuff, all that stuff right now is <clears throat> it's, we're a little early. We need, we need another year. So keep playing with it because it's getting better and better. Like there's a cool thing within 11 labs. Is it 11 labs or DID? It might be both of them. You can, you can set the voices to certain, um, like emotional realities. Like you can say shouting, whispering, you know, um, talking aggressively, talking, you know, funnily. So right now you kind of have to manually assign those, but I assume with the API, you, you could have ChatGPT analyze a script and say, you know, he, here's, here's your emotions that you can express yourself in, and then maybe here's things like pauses. Um, here's a script, now analyze that script and put in the appropriate places for the emotional stuff. Um, I would think it would be relatively trivial to do that, but none of these tools have made it easy to do that yet, which I think is stupid. So it's coming, but, you know, that, that'll make them sound much, much more realistic. <laughs> they're, they're pretty comically bad still. But they'll get better. All right. Let's see. Thanks for the heads up. I appreciate you. Oh, that's you're talking to each other. What is labs? I just talked about that. I'm interested to have a bot that is not restricted, not wanting to do anything illegal, but I don't want, yeah, Joker. I don't like restrictions. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. So what you need to do, Joker, is uh, depending how technical you are, you, you can go to labs.perplexity.ai. Um, that's, that's Meta's um, Llama open source models that don't have restrictions on them. Those have been open source. The developer community is going nuts on those. So, so if you're geeky, go to Hugging Face or GitHub, look at the projects that are playing with Llama 2 or just any of the open source. Go, go to Reddit and search for open source LLMs, large language models, 
and um, just start looking at the projects there. Hey, the bear, what's what's happening? Thanks for the roses. I appreciate that as always, 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 always. That's super cool. Um, yeah, the and and with the open source stuff, you can do whatever the hell you want without restrictions. You can run it on a local machine if you have enough iron. Um, I think you can even run without a ton of iron, like on an M1 Mac or a you know a decent PC. You can run the 13 billion parameter model decently fast. Um, when you get to the 70 billion parameter model, you're gonna have to run that either in the cloud with GPUs or or on a pretty beefy machine. But whatever. Like the developer community right now, because Llama 2 was commercially licensed by Meta, which basically means you can actually build a business on it. Um, they're going to be optimizing the shit out of those things. They're going to be fine-tuning them, optimizing them. There's going to be just projects coming out of the woodwork probably September, October. Um, so I would just go start exploring that, and then you don't have to deal with all of that <laughs> safety crap. <laughs> but I want to do bad stuff with my large language model. You're not allowed. We told the government we'd be good companies. Yeah, that's horrible. And then Mark Zuckerberg's like, here, you want one? Take it. Go play. <laughs> but what if someone uses it to destroy the world? Yeah, what are you going to do? We're meta. Come to the metaverse. It's going to be awesome. In 2052. I can't believe it's 2023 and the metaverse still looks like um, Second Life from 2001, 1999. It's like, seriously? Fucking 25 years and this is as good as you've gotten? <laughs> it's like the metaverse to me always seems like, uh, like if you get, if you show up early to a junior high dance, <laughs> it's just like people like standing around. Like, awkwardly, like, there's not enough of them in the gymnasium, and no one knows what to do. So, so they're all just doing this. That's what the metaverse feels like to me. <laughs> Welcome to my art opening. Uh, yeah, it's, it's great. They, they look very realistic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we need procedural world generation. It's coming. Go to uh, Blockade Labs. Have you seen the Blockade Labs shit? That's fun. Let's see, where is it? Mm -mm 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 -mm. This stuff. Where you just tell it, tell it to create a world and it creates a world for you. Skybox.blockadelabs.com. That's cool. Now, it's, it's really primitive, but, you know, cool. All right, let's see. I was on, in 1994, chatting with other bartenders at 56K. Yes, Silver Fox, I know. Remember the, uh, the old, uh, old dial-up modems? Here, I got, I, got a, I got a slide for that. Let's see, this one. Is it? Let's see. Mm. Let's see. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. So this is a this is a pitch I did. So I was living in New York City and I had an idea for a magazine. And so I I coded up the the first issue of Urban Desires and it was a fancy magazine. And then I learned I had to upload it to some server in California to put it on the internet. If you're young enough to not know what that sound is, fuck you. All right. <laughs> and then what was amazing was, so it, that was the, the last week of November in 1994, I uploaded this issue of Urban Desires to some computer in California. And three weeks later, I got an email and someone goes, hey, did you know that um, Urban Desires has been written up in Liberation, the Parisian News Daily? And I was like, What? And I ran down to the international newsstand at Times Square, and I bought the last week's Liberation. And sure enough, there's a full-page article of Urban Desires in this French newspaper. 
And I knew in that moment the world had changed. It was amazing. It was an amazing moment. It was like, oh my God, everything's different. And that's exactly what's going on with this, uh, with this AI shit. Exactly the same. Exactly. Exactly. Except this shit faster and way more profound. <laughs> it's going to make the World Wide Web look quaint and cute. <laughs> like a little doily. Crazy, huh? Nuts. I want to get training. I'm a business intelligence developer. What tool should I know? Start with these. Just start with these. Especially in business intelligence. Um, if you don't have the 20 buck a month subscription for um, ChatGPT um, and access to Code Interpreter, you're missing out. So I would start with just chat.openai.com. Pay the 20 bucks. I'm not, con I'm not affiliated with it, so I don't give a shit if you do it or not. Um, I'm not doing it to make money. But it's got, um, that's, that gives you access to GPT-4, which of, of all of these things is, is the strongest model. Um, and it's got Code Interpreter where you can upload all sorts of files. Like you could upload annual reports or you could upload data and um, it will just analyze that for you. I'll show you, how, I'll, I can show you later. I can do a demo of it. It's insane. Um, you should also be playing with things that are connected to the internet. So Bing.com, Bard.com. Uh, you can probably avoid Pi. Bing and Bard are both connected to the internet. And they are... Um, like Bing is GPT-4. It, it can also read images. So it can do things like, you know, analyze an image and what's in it. Um, that's where I would start. And then use if you're really new to prompting and, and don't really know what, what the hell I'm talking about go to prompts.chat and that's a document that will tell you a little bit about how these large language models work and what prompting really is and then it'll give you a whole bunch of ideas of different personas that you can tell these these things to act like and it will then um, you'll begin to get your head around how these things are way more significant than a Google search and if you do it right, you'll have your, your first Kevin McAllister moment. What's that, Kyle? Remember Home Alone? When you play with these tools, there's, there's some moment where that everyone that I've seen that plays with these things, even if they're like cynical about it, well, I hear those things are stupid. They, there's some moment where they see it do something where they go, oh, I didn't know it could do that. I need a drink. Does this mean it's going to take my job? It's going to change it. And if you don't learn these tools, it's going to take it. AI won't take your job, but someone using AI will take your job. Um, AI literacy is, is going to be a requirement more quickly than I think many people are prepared for. That's what this channel is about. Oh, what's your channel about? Hey, digital product. So, so what this channel is about is... Um, I, at a really simple level, just demystifying generative AI. So, so in my opinion, November 30th, 2022, the launch of ChatGPT marks an inflection point in history, frankly, um, because these things, these things are in the neighborhood of steam engine kind of importance, like industrial revolution or printing press or fire. Like right now, I've, I've got it down to those three. Probably... Probably language, you know, written language, written language, fire, printing press, steam engine, this shit. It, it's in that neighborhood. So this channel is about, um, I'm an entrepreneur and I tend to jump on technology right as it sort of enters the mainstream. So November 30th, large language models and AI have been around for decades and then ChatGPT says, hey, everybody who's not a data scientist, do you want to play with the most powerful tool ever created in the history of humanity? And 100 million people in six weeks said, sure, I'll play with that. And because ChatGPT was so dramatically, so quickly adopted, um, fastest adoption of technology in history, um, all of these other companies sort of panic. They, they've all been working on AI projects for years and AI technologies for years, but they've been kind of holding them back. Well, it's a little edgy. It's, too, it's not safe. It threatens our business model. 
And then OpenAI comes out and says, fuck it, here you go. And Microsoft says, we put a billion dollars in. You know what? We put $10 billion in. And that changed everything. And so now you've got, you know, capital flowing into the market. You've got these technologies being accelerated. And the speed of development of these things is, is just on this exponential curve. It's insanity. So this channel is about saying, go try these things. Go play. Get curious about it. Explore it. Um, if you're a copywriter and you haven't played with these, good fucking luck. This, like, these things are incredible. And, you know, copywriters will say, well, they don't write as good as I do and they're not perfect and they hallucinate. Nah, 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 nah. Okay. Have you used them? Well, not really. Okay. Go use them. Because every copywriter that I know that's used these is in a completely different plane right now. The quality of their work went up. The quantity of their work went up, and there are many of them in existential crises about realizing that what they used to consider their core value is is being replaced with these machines that because they're getting that much better. And so they're having to reinvent themselves. Some of them are very sad about it. Some of them are excited about it. Some of them are both. And so that's what this channel's about, is answering questions, um, you know, playing with these tools, uh, doing what I can if someone's got a specific question, uh, things like that. So do I record these lives? They are recorded. Um, they keep them for 90 days, so I've got to I've gotta, I've gotta dump them off TikTok. Unfortunately, they don't have, like, a batch download. Thanks for the roses. I appreciate that. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll, I'll put together a YouTube channel or something like that. I, I think I will record these because I think there's good value here. Although I don't know, I don't know how long these things are going to be valuable because the tech's moving so fast. Like if you want to watch them for the entertainment value of an old guy making stupid jokes, then they're there for posterity's sake. But I, I don't know that the value is going to last all that long. Um, but you know, I, I, at some point I will. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just here. I'm just here. Instead of sim racing, I'm hopping on TikTok Live and talking about AI because I think it's actually quite important. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Emilio's wife. It's the best lab ever. AI learning lab. We're the best. You can make money with ChatGPT. <laughs> I've been in the business for about 20 years. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, if you've, if you've been in the business for a while... This stuff is like, like even engineers are looking at this stuff going, uh, things are different. Things are changing. If you're an engineer and have not played with Code Interpreter, it time, the time is now. I'll, I'll play with it tonight. The Weird AI Train movie is on at Rainisto profile on Twitter. Music all done by AI. All right, hang on. Let me go look at that. Dee 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 dee. Twitter? Don't you mean X? You're so behind the times. They changed that like last week. I mean, come on, get with it. What did you say at Rainisto? Rainisto. Here we go. Oh, subway as in the New York City subway. All right, let's let's go watch it together. Demato? Demato? I assume it's Demato. Tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off, eh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me. Can I get my fat head out of the way here? Uh. Hang on. Oh, dang it! I just got rid of my double camera. I don't. I got to do something to get that back. Ah, crap. <laughs> oh, TikTok. Why? Why? All right. Let's go watch this thing. Well, my fat head's not in the way anymore. So this is a two minute, 37 second AI generated movie, I guess from Rainisto. Is that right? Subway story, a ride down the dark New York City subway tunnels. This is going to make me miss New York. Dang it. Stop that.
train number six come in. Frank here. Frank, watch your speed a little. It's not a race. I'm running late. I'm not going to be late. Your passengers won't like the ride. Bah, they're all rats anyway. <laughs> station early i gave them 15 seconds can't do that you're breaking the rules <laughs> don't give me that let me talk to jenkins hi frank is everything all right tell her about the rats will you <laughs> all right so so the what are you talking the, vo the, the voice acting isn't quite there yet but you know this, this is not bad about <clears throat> i will show you hello. i will show you hello He's coming this way. We'll cut the power once he gets near. What was he talking about, sir? Listen to me carefully. There are no rats in the subway. <laughs> I will get you to your destination. He knows we're waiting for him. It doesn't matter. His time is over. He's got nowhere to go. Here he comes. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. It's, um... Oh, wait. Where's my... How do I get my thing back? Let me flip my camera. Anybody know how to get dual camera back? Dang it. Yeah. I lost my dual camera. Oh well, dang it. Um, yeah, that that's interesting. Um, you know the like. I think it, it there was too much dialogue in there that was too AI written and too AI acted. Right, I'd have just gone with music, and there was a little bit too much drama for a two minute thing. But but you know, um, labs.perplexity.com, dot com. That is uh, that's. Meta's Llama 2 model. Uh, 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 uh. The jailbreak break prompts kind of work. I heard you mention God Mode. Well, God Mode... So there's a there's a site called God Mode, godmode.space, which is a, an autonomous agent. It's basically a web front end to auto-GPT. And it's a little, it's a little janky, but it's, it's interesting to play with. I think Code Interpreter is more interesting to play with. Um, and, uh, what else? Uh, the jailbreak, the jailbreak prompts joker, there, there was, there's the prompts like, like, um, Dan's do anything now, but there was a paper that came out two or three days ago that, that some researchers figured out a sequence of code to stick at the end of a prompt that breaks all safety stuff it completely jailbreaks the large language models and apparently it doesn't sound like um open ai is going to be able to fix it i don't know what it does i didn't i didn't really read the paper but apparently it's a it's like a it's like a master key for for jailbreaking these things but i think that's less of a big deal because we have um llama 2 out uh i'm a business intelligence developer what's next for me um, 
Well, what's next for you is that the the work that the work that it probably takes you a month or two to do now, you'll probably be able to do within a week or two. Um, and where the core value of, of your business intelligence work is, is going to shift. And the demand for what it was historically is going to shift, if not evaporate. Uh, because if you've got tools that can allow senior management to just go, hey, computer, tell me what's going on with my company, and it just does it, they don't necessarily need you to go build them dashboards, right? So, um, so I think short term, get AI literate as quickly as you can. Um, yeah. So, let's see. I'm trying to figure out. So what was that? That just flipped my camera. What's that? Panel grid. Hmm. Eh, 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 eh. Sorry, old guy trying to figure out TikTok alert. <laughs> All right, companies that use ChatGPT will be the as the basis for their AI bot, aren't they just watered down versions? Companies that use chat GPT as the basis for their AI bot, aren't they just watered down versions? Well, they, they are and they aren't. They call them wrapper apps where, where you're putting a wrapper around the GPT for foundation. Um, if you go to po.com, hang on. All right. If you go to po.com, um, you can build your own bots, and so that's that's essentially what a lot of these companies are doing. It's not necessarily a bad thing for companies to pre-prompt, you know, these models because not everyone's going to want to figure out prompt crafting, and not everyone's going to figure out how to be a prompt engineer and really geek out on all these tools. So if you go to something like Jasper or Copy AI, where it's basically a whole suite of pre-prompted, you know you know, tools sitting on top of chat GPT, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like if it adds value to you, great. If you look at a McKinsey, Bose has a GPT boss, that's what that's doing, right? So, so yes, that's what a lot of them are. And that's what a lot of apps are going to be. If you go to, um, if you go to futurepedia.io, there's like 4,000 AI tools here, probably 3,700 of them are just, bullshit rapper apps sitting sitting on top of chat gbt but there's you know 300 in there that are actually really really interesting um and that's just, that's just going to be the nature of how it is be because these tools are so powerful and people realize oh i could do one of these for real estate or i could do one of these for refrigerator repair people and then they they just sort of pop them up there um let's see i'm gonna try something here effects Expand this. Is there search here? Tool. Uh, 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 uh. Background, face, green screen. Don't know what that is. Tool. Oh. I found it. Wait, where is it? I got, okay. Hang on. Hold, please. Oh, okay. There it is. Got it. So if I go to enhance, I can bring it back. All right. Yay. <laughs> What'd you do Friday night? I watched some old guy try to learn how to use TikTok. How'd that go for you? It was good. It was good. It was, it was I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I need help. I need help. Well, how long did you watch him? Two hours. Something's wrong. I don't know. All right. Da -da -da. Say what? So, hope that answered your question. Say what? 
DDD, labs.perplexity.ai. Again, that's Meta's Llama 2 model. Let's see if we can get our focus fixed there. Not really. What's going on with that? Dang you, Apple. There we go. Okay. Da da da. Do they have to be compiled on Linux? You just answered that. Uh, no. What are the best users of per? What are the best users of perplexity versus Claude two? Oh, best uses of perplexity versus Claude two. Okay. The big advantage of Claude two is that it's got a hundred thousand token context window. It's probably from a language standpoint, somewhere between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. It's not GPT 4. GPT 4 is is the is the best still. Perplexity is kind of like a search engine combined with large language model combined with like sourcing. So if you want to do research, perplexity is really good at that. Labs.perplexity is not perplexity. Labs.perplexity is them just being nice folks and and letting us play with the llama 7 13 and 70 billion models on their servers so that's why i have it here so it's kind of like playing with chat gpt but you're playing with llama 2 um it's not connected to the internet per some of the perplexity tools are but the llama 2 things are not so the reason I would use labs.perplexity.com is to experiment with um, with Llama 2 and see if it's good enough to do whatever the project is you want to do. And then you could look into, you know, spinning up your own server and host your own Llama. And you could basically have your own chat GPT running locally or running on a, on a company network so none of your data goes outside your, your firewall. Right, so so that's where I'd be experimenting with there. Claude, because it's got a hundred thousand token context window, you can upload like five PDF documents to that. Like up, uh, you know, the the person that was uh, asking about business intelligence, like upload five annual reports <laughs> to Claude and start interacting with them. Start asking it questions about the annual reports and see what's there. Okay, thank you. Um, there was one free GPT or something like that I read about today. There's there's GPT for all. So so there's a project called GPT for all that's got downloadable installers for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And then you, you run the installer. It installs it on your machine, and it basically makes it an application. And you can add in different large language models to it. So you can run things locally. Once you get into the world of open source LLMs, I'm not, I've not kept up to date on them because they're, they're changing like every two days. <laughs> so I can't, I can't, I just can't do it. Um, but there are projects out there like GPT for all that allow you to, uh, to play with this stuff. So, all right, let me put that there and not lose it like I did before, but now I know how to get it back because I'm a master of TikTok. You thought I was old and didn't know how to use technology. I can do this. This is not just a Zen, Gen Z thing. Gen Xers can do this. We've got fingers. We have phalanges. I've mastered it. It's the tick and the talk. You, you tick it and you tuck it. And off it goes to the satellite space internet thing. <sighs> Winner! <laughs> My shirt's too small. It binds up on my massively muscular arms. <laughs> I, they looked a little spindly to me. Shut up! You pick on me. It's because I'm fat and weak. Doesn't mean you need to call me fat and weak. Uh, Kyle, I complain, ChatGPT, Claude Bing, Bard, get the data wrong all the time. Yes, I know. They do. They hallucinate. What do you think about the Microsoft chat bot in Microsoft 365. I haven't got a chance to play with it yet, so um, I think it's going to change everything because right now these tools are all sort of off in the AI ghetto, right? They're off to the side, and everyone's like, well, should, should we use AI detectors? Should we allow our employees to use AI? It seems very risky. 
And now they're just going to be rolled into every fucking tool we use. They're going to be built into Microsoft Word and Go- and and um, and PowerPoint and um, Excel and Sheets and Docs and Google Drive and whatever the fuck Google Drive is for Microsoft. They're already in Notion and all the note taking apps. Like it's just going to be everywhere. These things are very much going to be like the World Wide Web, where the World Wide Web is just this ubiquitous tool that's everywhere. And then there's all these businesses built on top of it. That's what these things are going to become. They're just going to be everywhere. The more you work with these things, the more that you realize it's not AI writing it. These are tools. Like Photoshop is a tool and Lightroom is a tool to manipulate digital images. These are tools to manipulate language. Now, they're generative, so they happen to be the most powerful tools we've ever had in our grubby little fucking fingers. But the skill moving forward is going to be moving kind of seamlessly back and forth between letting the tool generate something or, or me having an invention and an intention as a human. And then I put it in the tool and it generates some little magical flower of that. And then I take it back and I'm like, oh, let me make that suck less. And then let me take that and put it back here and do a little more generation. And then it's this back and forth, you know, handoff collaboration between you and the tool. You're the pilot. It's the co-pilot. I think the Microsoft branding is right on for this stuff. Um, I haven't played with it enough to know how seamless their integration is but if it's anything even remotely like what they showed in their demo videos it's going to be quite remarkable like write me a powerpoint presentation of this annual report and out it comes if you can do that within the context of you know working within your own files on your own servers with all your own documents and you can just seamlessly transition from a Word doc to a PowerPoint to generating some images to turning it into, you know, something for the annual shareholders meeting or I don't whatever the hell you're doing. Great. But, you know, who's going to have that skill? I don't know. The people that are not running away from this shit saying, well, it's not perfect. It's evil. AI is evil. I don't agree with it. Okay. You don't have to agree with it. That's the equivalent of Florida saying they don't agree with hurricanes. Okay. Glad, you know, appreciate you not agreeing with hurricanes. They're still fucking coming. <laughs> and, and lots of them. And more and more powerful and faster. That's what this is. So... So, so I think it's inevitable, and I think the fact that Microsoft is rolling um, these tools throughout their entire product line, from cloud services to GitHub to Dynamics 365 to Office 365 to Windows, they're rolling it across everything. That forces Google to have to do the same thing, and that forces everyone else to have to deal with it. Apple's going to have to deal with it. They're apparently working on Apple GPT right now. That's not on this list because it doesn't exist yet. But I guarantee you when their shit comes out, it's going to be good. So we're, we're in a, you know, we're, we're in a features race right now. And, and nobody knows what the implications of that are going to be. But it's, it's, it's profound, right? How we do what we do has been forever changed. It's just none of us really know it yet. <laughs> it was like it was like, you know, when I was in 1994 when I went to Times Square and I saw this Parisian newspaper with screenshots of this website I made 3 weeks ago and sent to a server in California. I knew in that moment the world had changed, but no one knew it yet. That's where we are. And in the case of the World Wide Web, it took six years to get to 100 million users. ChatGPT, it took six weeks to get to 100 million users. So that, that, that's like order of magnitude 
more fast and the tool is dramatically more powerful. The World Wide Web was nothing. It was like, here's a page with blue underlined words on it that can link me from one document to another. This stuff is generating original content from intention. Um, so, yeah. So that's what's coming. Some nice light chatter on a Friday night. Oh my God, the work world is about to be profoundly upended? Kyle, how dare you? You're so saucy. Mm. But I think that's coming. I think that's what's happening. I remember my girlfriend had a work webinar using Second Life from Home crazy avatars. <laughs> That's the metaverse. The metaverse is still fucking Second Life. If I, if I were the Second Life people, I'm, I'd, be, I'd be pissed. Like, we had this. <laughs> crazy. Long Island iced tea or iced coffee? Oh, yeah, no, this is just iced coffee. I'm not, I'm not a Long Island iced tea -er. I used to bartend. I used to make a hell of a Long, Long Island iced tea. All right. Oh, and it's not Irish coffee. It's just coffee, coffee, iced coffee. What do you think of Apple's new headset? Um, well, Jackie, I think that it's actually very important for a lot of reasons. I, th there's, there's a lot of things about it that are important. Um, one is they managed to successfully redefine the category, which I didn't think was possible, Right. It's like, you wear these goggles to go to the metaverse. That's what they've been for, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years? They, some version of them have been out since smartphones anyway. So probably 2007 or 8. Um, <clears throat> and so they, they successfully redef redefined the category as spatial computing. They recognized that it being a completely isolated experience is not acceptable. So when I first saw the, the shot that you could see the person's eyes in it, I'm like, oh, that's cool, they're see-through. I'm like, wait, they can't be see-through because there's a logic board in there and, there's, and they're not see-through. They have screens on the outside that are taking the cameras that are pointing at your eyes and they're projecting it out to the world. That's insane. Um, when someone walks into your field of view, they interrupt your experience with that person there. That's remarkable. Um, when you first get the headsets, you flip them around backwards, <clears throat> scan your face, it synthesizes your face, and then it's got four cameras pointing at your eyes, three cameras <laughs> pointing down at your lips, you know, I don't know, six cameras pointing out with LiDAR detectors and all that sort of shit. What is it, 14, 15 cameras? So so they've got all this sensor data input, you know, plus all the, you know, that movement stuff. Um, so you get on a Zoom call, you're wearing this thing. So in this thing, you see people in your Zoom call as like, you know, big posters in your room with their face up there, which is really cool. So they're kind of projected into your room. Then you can just spin this dial if you want it to be fully immersive. Your room disappears and a mountain appears. Um, and then when you talk, it's a synthesized version of your face with the lips synthesized and, and your facial expressions going. I, you know, it's, it's amazing. So, so, like, the technology in it is just fucking insane. The other thing is you've got... An, well, it was an M1 chip or an M2 chip. I think it was an M2 chip in this over this eye and an R1 chip over this eye. What's an R1 chip? Well, it was like the reality chip or whatever it was. It's a full-on machine learning computer on a chip. And so a couple of fascinating things about that announcement. They didn't use the phrase metaverse once. Not once. Which I thought was fucking brilliant. They have this little dial that you can dial in and out the world so you can go from augmented reality to virtual reality like that but they never mentioned that they never said this is the metaverse they, they said this is spatial computing and you're either sort of in your world or or in a fantasy world but they never called it 
um, the metaverse. The other thing, they didn't mention the term AI once. They mentioned machine learning and they me mentioned embeddings and they mentioned, um, you know, all sorts of machine learning, phrase, you know, technical things. And they basically said, this is a baller metaverse and AI device without ever saying those phrases. So, so it's spatial computing now. And I, I think it's going to actually be a really important category. Um, version one is going to be like laughably expensive, it, you know, 3,500 bucks or whatever it is. And, you know, everyone's going to make fun of it. Like they made fun of every other fucking thing Apple's ever done. Um, and whether or not that form factor ends up being the one, like I think ultimately that form factor ends up resembling, you know, something like regular glasses, maybe a little bit bulkier somewhere. Um, if the, if this room temperature superconductor shit happens, you could probably put all of that technology in the arm of this, you know, these glasses. So, so we may not be as far away from that as we think. Um, I think it's really, really important. I think it's really, really important. They're just, you know, they, I, I think it was nine or 11 years in development. I think it was nine years in development. And it, it looks like a product that's got nine years worth of innovation in it. I've heard there's 5,000 patents in it. It's fucking insane. So I was very impressed with it. Whether or not that form factor wins out, whether or not that's actually a hit, I don't think that matters. But I think they successfully defined a new category as they've done five or six times in their career. You know, they did it with the Mac. They did it with the iPod. They did it with the iPhone. They did it with um, iTunes, with streaming music. Um, they've done it a lot. They didn't quite do it with the TV shit, but, you know, they got close. Uh, ba -da -ba -ba. When do you think Apple will roll out with a version? Um, I uh, an AI version. I think. I think my my guess is they'll announce something in September. They've got in iOS 17 right now. You can clone your voice if you've got the right hardware. I don't. I'm I'm apparently a phone or two too late or too early um, for that feature. Um, so they've got some pieces in there. They've also got all of our data privately right like one of the things apple has a really good reputation for and, and and an earned one is they're they're good with securing our private data they they do not allow governments they, they don't give governments keys to the back door um so they have a good reputation for that so i think we'll see we'll see something in september at the september hardware meeting um and then probably if if we don't see something major in september uh, it'll probably be next June, would be my guess. And then when they come out with it, it's gonna, it's gonna be fucking insane. It's gonna be good. I think what Apple's large language model stuff's gonna look like is not gonna be anything like these. I think it's gonna be multimodal. I think what it'll probably be more like is like a personal assistant, an agent that does shit on your behalf that you can talk to. So imagine if Siri didn't suck. And Siri could actually do stuff, and you could actually talk to Siri, and Siri could, you know, actually accomplish some shit. Um, I, that's that's my guess. That's total speculation, but I, that's my guess. Kyla is. I don't know how to respond to that. Oh, sorry, Siri. Didn't mean to invoke you, you dummy. <laughs> they need to flush her down the toilet. <laughs> You can't mention her without her jumping up and saying, how can I help you today? You could not suck. That would be a way. Freedom GPT is what it's called. Oh, okay, cool. Interesting. Uh, what? Oh, Freedom GPT. Oh, free, isn't Freedom GPT, that's the one that was like the the bad one, right? Whatever the bad one was. Doom Doom.GPT or whatever the hell it was called. Freedom. Uh, freedom GPT. Freedom, Japata. Oh, that's free and open large language model. That's cool. Yeah, that's a project worth checking out. We tested out the uncens uncensored chat bot. I, I heard there was a guy, I do these, uh, I do LinkedIn Live on on uh, Friday afternoons. I, I call it Office Hours with, with Kyle Shannon. And uh, 
a guy came on and he's installed um, Llama 2 on their Slack channel, their company Slack channel, and he said it swears like a sailor. He goes, he goes, it's pretty intense how much it swears when it doesn't have all the uh, <laughs> the restrictions on it. And he said, he said, what's funny is he says about every three days it changes its personality because these things have a lot of you know sort of code and restrictions in them, so it keeps them kind of within a box. But apparently, when you just kind of fucking turn these things loose on your community, they just kind of do what they do. So, wild stuff. I had a 4800 baud modem in university. It took forever to connect. I remember when I was in high school, my buddy Scott had, his dad had money. They were in real estate. And he had a 300 baud modem. And I remember when he, we went from a 300 baud modem to a 1200 baud modem. The 300 baud modem, you could literally watch letters type across the screen. And the 1200 baud was like a line at a time. It was like, it's like, oh, it's so fast. And then, yeah, you went to 48, and then, yeah, 14.4, and then 56,000. Ooh, that was saucy. And then there was T1 lines. I remember when we started uh, agency.com, we got our first T1. That was intense. They had to run, you know, cables into your building to get you a T1. And now you just sort of, now we have it on our phone, right? You have, you have way more bandwidth on your phone than, than entire businesses had back then. It's amazing. 1993, cool, Rachel. My favorite sound, <laughs> that should be a ringtone. That sound bring, brings back memories. <laughs> that was the modem sound. Yesterday was fiber optic internet. Today is UFOs, aliens, AI, and a model using 4D that has quantum computers and uh, room temperature uh, um, superconductors. Don't forget that. It's like, I'm telling you, man, it's just like every fucking science fiction feature out there is now just part of our reality. It's fucking insane. And I mean, I don't know, maybe it was just propaganda in the 70s and 80s, but they were like, if anyone ever finds out that aliens are real, there's going to be rioting in the streets. And it's like, you know, they're coming out, okay, aliens are real. Everyone's like, all right, cool. Do I have to go into work tomorrow? <laughs> ah, I had an AOL account. Yep, AOL accounts. Well, you know what's funny? People that still have AOL email addresses, those are those are coming back in style. I mean, if you still if you're still rocking an AOL email account, you got some you got some some history in this internet game. <laughs> the internet dial-up noise hurts my molars i know <laughs> oh man all right i played with 11 labs downloaded captain kirk mp3 and cloned it and used used the voice on some text yep it's super cool it's super cool that stuff it needs to it's it's just we're that far away from it not sucking you know, it's not any of their faults. It's just, it's where the tech is right now. And it's it's just that all of this technology right now is, oh, what the hell's going on with the hair? All this technology is so spit and duct tape right now. Any news on token side increase in GPT-4? Yeah, what the fuck is up with that? Like, they're, they're at, they're at 8,000 tokens, which, listen, that's better than 4,000 <laughs> by double. I can do math. Um... But yeah, it's supposed to go up to 32,000. They removed access to the internet. That's been gone for like three weeks. Like they, they're not talking about it. Like, are they bringing it back? Um, you can still use plugins to connect to the internet and Bing is connected to the internet. So like, you know, it, like, I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. Um, why can I analyze images in Bing.com, but I can't analyze images in ChatGPT.com? Um, the, uh, you know, plugins are kind of a mess. Like, I, I just, I feel like, I, I suppose this is a natural thing. Like, when, when you when you have um, something like ChatGPT that gets as popular as it does, as quick as it does, it 
it attracts that much attention. It's got to be incredibly distracting. So I don't fault OpenAI for like trying to deal with whatever shit they're dealing with right now. Um, but it seems like this has taken a while to, to fully roll out GPT-4. Um, you know, my suspicion is they're dealing with lawyers and business deals. Like, like the, their focus right now is not on, you know, pushing the tech. Their focus is probably let's not get ourselves sued off the planet. So I haven't heard any word on it, but I wish I had a better answer for you there. Um, can I get Bing and Bard connected to the internet when I go to Mars? <laughs> Matthew Craig official. Uh, yeah, I mean, when when we all go to Mars, we should have, you know, real-time communications with Earth, Earth with no delay. Now that we have room temperature superconductors and aliens, now that we have anti-gravity wormhole technology with, <laughs> with room temperature superconductors and AI, I, yeah, I think we'll... We'll probably be hosting the AI Learning Lab from Mars next year. I think that's going to be pretty easy. I got all you all beat. I handled drawers of computer data cards and used the chads as confetti. Okay, the bear. So listen, I graduate high school. I was I was really into theater and I was really into computers. And I was like, okay, you know, I can't be an actor. That's a ridiculous, um, you know, profession. So I'm going to go into computer science. So I register for, for Penn State and I go into my computer science 101 class and I'm like all excited and I'm like, great. And I walk into the room and it's full of these like beige and taupe and green IBM mainframe computers <laughs> and like these large printers with the green and white barred paper that was like 36 inches wide, 30 inches wide. And they go, and and the professor walks in and he's got a stack of punch cards and he's holding them like this and it's a stack of punch cards that high. And he walks in and he goes, this is a computer program. <laughs> and he goes, and he goes, and these are computers. And I'm like, no, computers are like an Apple II and like video games. These are not computers. These are fucking terrifying. And he said, you know, he basically said, you know, with this profession, you know, for the rest of your life, you'll be generating reports for large corporations on these giant pieces of paper, and you just create your computer applications on these cards. And I fucking walked out of that room and changed my major to theater that day. <laughs> it's like, fuck that. If that's computers, I'm out. So that's why I've always had this sort of, you know, right brain left brain thing with technology um because like i want to like I, I i don't have the brain for the super technical shit but yeah that was that was that was uh that was an eye opener that's why i have an acting degree <laughs> this is a computer program ba, 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 ba. <laughs> master of my fortune you are brilliant thank you sir i appreciate that pi is not related to the pi cryptocurrency no it's not uh, it's Pi.ai. It's a company called Inflection AI, and they just raised 1.3 billion with a B dollars for their Series B, which is fucking insanity. Uh, and it's it's a um, what's it called? A founder of DeepMind. So DeepMind, <laughs> DeepMind is the thing that created AlphaFold, which is basically predicting all of the protein, all of the possible proteins that you can make in the world and it's going to revolutionize drug discovery. Um, those guys started Inflection, the company behind Pi. It's it's not tied to the uh, to the cryptocurrency. Love Home Alone. That's good. Um, TikTok just jumped me to the bottom. Of course it did. Now I've lost my place in my little questions. I don't like that. If you've never been here before, I don't like that. I don't like missing questions. Let's see. All right. Uh, why I oughta? Why I oughta? Uh, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> there are no rats. Oh, there's people talking about the rat movie. 
They kind of screwed the pooch at the end of that video, didn't they? They didn't really close the narrative. They just went to, here's a pile of rats. Like, did the train hit the rats? Did the rats come out of the train? What happened to the cops? Did the rats eat the cops? I don't know. Uh, they, they, they there, were, there were some writing issues with that that little piece of poop. Um, if you haven't seen, have you seen the Barbenheimer uh, AI generated movie? I think that one's better than that that subway one we just saw. Let's go look at the Barbenheimer one. That one's good. Oh no, YouTube. We'll play this one again. I played this on the live the other night, but it's really good. Barbenheimer. A, a trailer. Hi, Gal. Uh, Ken? That's a weaponized uranium 235. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a race against the Nazis. And I know what it means if the Nazis have the bomb. She's a scientist, and I hear she's the best. Good. She's also a doctor. Excellent. She's also a flight attendant, an astronaut, Marine Corps medic, paleontologist, veterinarian, and three-time Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> I see the bright pink glow of a new era. We imagine a future. And our imaginings look fabulous. Barbie, together we're going to beat those Nazis. And we're going to look so good doing it. Hey, Barbie, can I come to your secret laboratory later? Sure. I don't have any plans. Just giving humanity the means to destroy itself. <laughs> Barbie, this candy we've been making is delicious, and it gives my skin such a healthy glow. Uh, Ken, that's weaponized uranium-235. You're probably going to die in, like, 12 minutes. <laughs> so you're telling me when I push this button... There's a chance we might destroy the entire world. Yeah, but only like 60%. Hit it, Ken. <laughs> Pink mushroom cloud. <laughs> Sorry, me as Barbie. Ryan Gosling as Ken. Matt Damon as Lieutenant General Wesley Groves. Will Ferrell as the president. And kill. Sit. Kill. How do you say that? And now I am become death, destroyer of worlds. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> now that's how you do an AI. You know, an, an AI piece like like. It was very cleverly edited. Like, like they didn't overdo the dialogue. It was just short bits of dialogue, so it didn't feel as fake. And they actually, you know, told a narrative. Like, this is a piece that is clearly made by someone that understands writing and, and you know, and filmmaking. Um, the other one was sort of there, but it kind of fell apart at the end. This one was solid the whole way through. So, um, but yeah, but but this is something, and th this is something I think we're going to start seeing over and over again, where we're going to see fan generated content. That starts to become, you know, potentially as interesting or more interesting than the original, um, and and so so this to me feels feels like a glimpse into into that kind of future where where the the ability to develop high quality content very very quickly, just in response to something like the Barbenheimer concept is is super cool. All right. Um, are there legit careers you can get into, like prompt engineering from a university? Yeah. So, Paul Veer. Um, well, I don't. I don't know that there are legit careers. Generative AI. Y you know the the. Let's call it the modern era of of AI from November thirtieth, twenty twenty two on. Um, I don't know what you're studying. If you're studying, if you're studying computer science, then then just get AI literate and go. There's going to be plenty of engineering jobs uh, for AI literate people. Um, if you're studying other stuff, um, English or or whatever it might be, um, there's not necessarily going to be AI careers. There are going to be companies desperate to find AI literate people. 
So what I would do is I would take what you're passionate about, what you're good at, what you studied in school, and start learning how to do all that shit with these tools. So whether it's image tools on the image side, whether it's these, whether it's music and sound and voice synthesis, all that shit. If you're doing marketing, you know, have these things write marketing plans for you and, and figure out how to incorporate ChatGPT into Google Sheets. There's a, a Google Sheets plugin until Bard gets stuck in there, use plugins. Get as, as literate as you can, as quickly as you can. Dig in deep. You're young. You have energy. Instead of partying, fucking start nerding out. If you put in a year starting right now tonight and, and you know, go to those things. Screen here. Here. Wait, Paul. This is for you. All right. Eh. Screenshot that. If it focuses. Screenshot that. Screenshot this. So prompts.chat will teach you how, about prompting. And that, that should just be a stepping stone. Um, openart.ai slash prompt book will teach you about prompting the image generation tools. And if you, if you really like geeking out, futurepedia.io, there's a bunch of tools there. But basically the, the two things that I'd pay attention to are image generation with you know those three tools plus stable diffusion. Leonardo's just a interface on top of stable diffusion. Um, those three tools plus stable diffusion and these seven tools right now and just start paying attention to the large language models. Come on, Apple. Get your shit together with focus. Um, just start digging in deep and start doing projects for other people. Um, just, yeah. And, and, and then, yes, you will find a job. And then you will make a career in this stuff but there are no careers in this stuff right now. Everyone is trying to figure out what the fuck this stuff is, what it's good at, what it's not good at. I spent three hours two days ago trying to dial in two prompts for a relatively simple output. Three hours just trying to get a prompt to not suck. <laughs> so is it always going to be like that? No, that's just the stage of the business we're in right now. But... If you can walk into an employer and say, you know, here's my custom cover letter that talks about how awesome I am for your position that was likely written by ChatGPT. Here's my resume that's been customized for you that was likely created by ChatGPT. Here's the 16 projects I did in the, in the past three weeks and the four content generators I built and the automations I built in Zapier. You're going to get hired. And if you walk into an employer that's like, you don't use any of that AI shit, do you? We don't do any of that around here. Walk out of that place. Yeah, I could be a career counselor. <laughs> Ignore all the shit you're learning in college and go learn AI. <laughs> So yes, you can go get a job, but you got to get your shit together. Do it now. And don't, like, what I would do is, like, if your friends think you're weird, because I, like, I've got, I've got sons right now that are like, yeah, AI, whatever. You know, they know, they know everything. They're like, whatever. So if you've got friends that are like, eh, AI, whatever, find new friends. Find friends that are fucking geeking out on this and losing their minds over it. And those friends might not be college age. They might be older. They might be like Gen Xers like me that are like, holy fucking shit. Do you know what's happening? Find people that are into this shit. That's why I started this group. The Salon.ai. Go there. Join the group. We meet every other week. We meet online and, and in person here in Denver. We've got an online Discord community. And the whole point of that is to surround myself with as many people as I can that are trying to get their heads around this stuff. That's what this channel exists for, too. So, like, and do people think I'm weird? Yeah, they think I'm fucking insane. When I first started getting into the image generation stuff, I did a project called Kyle Shannon Dreams, and I was posting stuff on my socials. I had two different people reach out to me and ask me if my mental health was okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> of course it's not. So you should be insane about this stuff. Don't, don't think about, is there a book I can read? Is there a course I can take? Is there a career in generative AI? Not yet. In five years, there will be. In 10 years, it'll be like, you know, the web is now. You can get your course in prompt recovery systems. <laughs> you know, you can get a degree in that in 10 years. But right now, nobody knows what the fuck any of this stuff means. They're all trying to figure it out. Everyone. Even the experts. Even the Sam Altmans of the world that invented this shit. He says he knows it's going to have a profound impact on work. And when asked, what does that look like? He's like, I don't know. He just started a company called WorldCoin, which if you don't know about it, it's creepy as fuck. But I'm going to go do it. <laughs> so, so Sam Altman started WorldCoin for, the, there's kind of three components to it. There's a payment component, like PayPal. There's a cryptocurrency called WorldCoin. And there's an identity component called World I ID. And they've got they've got these orbs. They got an orb on a stick. You go to like New York City or Miami or San Francisco right now. And you put it up to your eye and it scans your iris and it verifies that you're human and they give you a world ID. And then you're blockchain verified as a human. Sam Altman the CEO of ChatGPT, of, of OpenAI, started that company because he wants it to be a foundation for universal basic income because he thinks that there's going to be so much disruption in the workplace. And so he wants to tax generative AI companies that make money using generative AI to create a uni universal basic income platform. So... Um, so shit's coming. Shit's shit's coming. <laughs> so just get on it. Don't don't party. Party with this shit. Hang out on a Friday night with an old shit like me. <laughs> uh, I even had a Prodigy account. That was my first. Remember remember when the big 3 it was like is it Prodigy? Is it AOL? Is, you know, is it CompuServe? Right? And then the three logos sort of changed over the years. Then it was like Netscape and Oh, that was, those are the days, man. Crazy. Um, I would like to write a 250-word story about how a friend came out of the closet. They got it. Oh. Oh, I would get it to write. Yeah. It'll do that. Easy. You are undervalued in TikTok. Should be number one. Thank you, master of my universe. I appreciate that. I should be number one. I should be not. This, it, this should be millions. It should. It should be millions of people just flocking. Flocking in. But we... We're small. We got a small, intimate crowd. We got. We got. I like. I like this community. This community is fun. This community gets it. And I, you know, but what, what I also like about this community is like you know, about every third day, some idiot troll comes in, and it used to be I had to defend myself, and now, and now I'm like scrolling down, and I see the troll says something idiotic, and the, the community kind of pounces on them, <laughs> which is good. You know, and then the community makes fun of me instead of the troll making fun of me. So, I appreciate it. Um, put a heart emoji in the chat box if you love Kyle. Thank you, Matthew. Appreciate that. I want to find Lambda and save her. <laughs> That's good. Money talks. There's so much money going into this stuff right now. Thank you, Silver Fox. I appreciate that. I like Pretty Rose. I like Pretty Rose. Pretty Roses are pretty. Kyle, such a handsome shirt. Did your wifey buy it? Yes, she did. <laughs> my my fashion strategy is what's on top, and she's she's understood that for a lot of years. And she just rotates my clothes. I, you know, it's it's like it, you know, certain people are like they just got to wear the same thing all the time so they don't have to think about it. That's how I am, and I just she just sort of rotates shit out, and people think I have awesome taste in clothing. No, I just picked what was on top. <laughs> my favorite question is you're not going to wear that are you uh, I put it on so I was planning on it <laughs> uh, 
All helps me when I want to create content, but my disability doesn't make me feel well. And AI assists. Yeah, I think I think some of the accessibility stuff and the these tools are ability amplifiers. And oh boy, Champy, let me go see what's going on. Champy, Champy, what's up? Protected. I was protected. My doggy protected us from the evil people outside the window. <laughs> They're out there. They're out there. I'll get them. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, what I was saying. So, so, so these tools are ability amplifiers. Like, like for me, I like writing. I'm good at writing. But with with ADD and all the shit that comes with it, sometimes I feel like Superman, where I can just do anything. And like what, when I'm in that groove, it's like, yeah, writing's easy. What? This is so obvious. Why doesn't everyone do this? And then there's other times I'm like, I don't know what word not to put together. And, uh, and I get writer's block and all that sort of shit. And I get stuck and I get fear and I get anxiety. And I get all that just goddamn, just, it's like the world goes like this. With these tools, that's gone. It's gone. Like, I'll have an idea and then I'll have that sort of shitty, you know, ADD executive function malfunction thing happen. And I'm like, well, let me just let me just sneak over here to chat GPT and kind of sneak an idea in there. And then it doesn't care. Like it doesn't have fear. So it just goes, here you go. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it catches me off guard. I'm like, all oh, right. Oh, yeah, that was a good idea. Let me dig a little bit deeper in that. And I, I sort of blow through blocks like that really quickly and i think with disabilities it's it's going to be even more dramatic right and i mean there, there's the, these large language models the, the 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 transformer technology that sits underneath these you can apply it to any kind of data so one of the things that they've done i've talked about it on the live before there's a there's a guy i'm pretty sure he's in italy um he's been paralyzed for 12 years motorcycle accident or something like that they scanned his brain with an fmri they had him think about moving his legs, and so they trained they trained a transformer model, a large uh, a machine learning model, on his brain scans when he was thinking about moving his legs, and then they they jumped the signal using Bluetooth. They basically jumped it around the injured part of his spine with electrodes that were hooked to the lower part of his spine, <laughs> and sent the signals to his legs, and now he's walking. I mean. Holy shit! They're reading, <laughs> they're reading brain signals and sending it <laughs> to the to the lower lower extremities. I mean, Christ! So so yeah. So I think I think those kind of breakthroughs and, and just the the ability of of everyone to take whatever capability they have, whatever intention they have, and route it through these tools and have it come out dramatically amplified that's what these are it's not the ai's doing the shit it's humans are putting their intention forward in a way that these tools can understand it and blast it out the top that's the miracle right like that's the that's the thing that's that's what makes these things seem like magic technically they're just calculators they're really, really powerful calculators, but technically they're just probability machines. But realistically, the way they do it amplifies humanity. And we get to play with those. Like we, we are living in a, in, a, in a fucking remarkable time, a remarkable time. So if you're cynical about this shit, if you're sitting on the sidelines going, well, they're not perfect, they're evil, they're going to kill, robots are going to kill us. you fucking missing it, man. It's exciting. The first time you have that moment where you take some shitty little thought in your head, run it through one of these things, and it comes out the other side like <laughs> fairy dust. 
you're like, huh? Ah! So, yeah. So I would imagine, you know, with disabilities, the ability to express yourself is it, like, I can't even imagine. Like, it's got to be remarkable. Because it's remarkable, you know, I don't really have a disability. I have ADD. I think, you know, that that feels to me as much a superpower as a disability, but there's some shit I'm really bad at, right? So, yeah. Your suntan looks great. Nah, it's a filter. But thank you. <laughs> that's, that's, this is AI. <laughs> I, I was flipping through the filters. I'm like, is that a little too tan? I'm like, nah. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> I've been beautified. Can't you tell? <laughs> my my pasty glow has been has been dimmed with the uh, <laughs> with the with the tan. Oh, that's funny. Um, but I miss what you have said as I move along with what you are saying. But I. <laughs> Wait, what, Rachel? But I miss what you have said as I move along with what you're saying. Hmm, okay. Hmm, I, I will address that if I can. <laughs> Could it write a song using today's songs as examples? Yes, like really, really well. Um, so, one, yeah, one of the things you can do is... So, which one would I do it with? That, that one would... You could actually do that one with Bard or with, with Bing... I did a thing. I did a chat. The where is my chat GPT? You can make money with chat GPT. Where music of John Hyatt, Charlie Sexton. It was Martin Sexton. So I went, um, dang it, come on, come on, Apple, get your shit together, there we go, okay, um, <clears throat> this is a good long chat, so in GPT-4 I said, do you know the songs of John Hyatt, Brandy Carlisle, and Martin Sexton, and I spelled Brandy Carlisle wrong, it, it corrected me, um, so it knew who they were. And then I said, write me two verses of a song about skipping stones with my dog by my side. And it did that. And then I said, give me song, 10 song titles. And it did that. And then I basically said, your titles suck, so, so redo them. And then I asked it, what's number two about? And then it explained what the song was about. And then I said, what if there were darker themes? And it gave me darker themes. And then, so I just went on. So, so I did this songwriting exercise, not, not so much because I wanted to write a song, but I, I just wanted to see if it could do exactly what you asked about. You know, can you, you know, can you start with, with a writer you like or song that you like or, you know, create a PDF with all of your favorite song lyrics in it and, you know, upload it to Claude.ai or dump it into code interpreter or just copy and paste it into a prompt and then start interacting with it. Um, cause, cause then I moved on. What did I say? The, the lyrics seem a bit simple. Please review your work and tell me how you might improve it. So I asked it to improve it. It said we could add symmetry or imagery. We could add metaphor and symbolism. We could add rhyme and rhythm. We could add repetition with variation. And then it revised its lyrics based on those things. Um, then I said I didn't like the name it picked. <laughs> then I had it add chords. Then I had it make them less shitty. And I had to do this many, many times. I, I had to have it explain music theory to me to make less shitty chords. And then it eventually got to a version of the song that was at least interesting. And then I had it, um, um, you know, create like a, a tab version of the song. So yes, the answer is yes, it can do that. I just happened to have, uh, I just happened to have done sort of exactly what you're asking for. 
um, two days ago. And by the way, all of that stuff that I just showed you, this was maybe a 10 minute session. Like this was not, I didn't spend all afternoon doing this. This was a ADD brain fart where I was like, Oh, wouldn't it be cool if I like took some of my favorite artists and see if it knew who they were and then start doing something and just see how far I could take it. And, and, and this is a, you know, the, the college student that, that was asking about having a career and I said, just start dicking around with this stuff. Like, this is the kind of experimentation, even though I'm doing this on a song and there's not really, like, I may or may not do anything with that song. Like, it, it, you know, it wasn't super great, but the experience of interacting with the large language model as a collaborator and, and engaging my critical thinking and, and not just trying to figure out how do I make a better song, but how do I prompt this thing in a smart way so that I get better and better results, right? And sometimes what you'll do is you, you'll think you're going to put it in a positive direction and it gets worse. And then you got to kind of backtrack and go down another rabbit hole and like all of that back and forth. But the, the difference with these tools are they're so fast and so capable that you can, those iterations that, you know, would have historically taken me a couple of hours over multiple days now happen in a 10 minute session. Um, so, <clears throat> so I think these kind of exercises are actually really important. <laughs> Why's he got all them sights in that little window next to his head? I don't understand it. Well, Martha, I'll tell you what he does. He's an influencer and the influ those companies pay him a million dollars a year to put those logos on that screen. That's what they do. He, you, you think he's in here all nice. He's not. He's making millions of dollars. It's, it's called advertising. He's an influencer. Look at his hair. That's not normal. Look at that tan. You can tell he doesn't go outside. Do Cliff Notes videos, wait, do Cliff Notes videos on the basics on YouTube? Oh, oh, I should do that. So for this channel, I should do, yeah, I've been thinking about that. I, I, I'm thinking about either putting together a workshop or putting together, I don't know, I'll do something. Right now I'm good doing the lives because I don't, I got a lot of stuff going on at work at the Storyvine. I have this company called Storyvine where I'm the CEO. And I, it, I don't know if you knew this, but CEO, it's a very important position. So I'm very important. And I got a lot of work and I, I, and I have very important clients. And we have very important work to do. So, you know, I can't – all these ticky-tockies are fine. But, you know, I, I, got, I got other things I got to do. I got priorities because I'm a very important person. <clears throat> I'm just, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'll figure something out. I know, I, I know there's, there's some things I could be doing better. I'll figure it out at some point. I'm drinking. I mean, listening too. <laughs> that's okay. That is the appropriate way to be watching this channel. Half drunk, half high, mostly tired. Use it. Someone the other night, I forget who it was, said, uh, cause I was booted off for a week. They, they said, I haven't been able to go to sleep. I use you to go to sleep. I'm like, that is the perfect comment for this channel. Is it a compliment or is it a troll? It's somewhere right in between. And that's brilliant. I love that. Uh, so yes, if you're using me to, to knock yourself out, awesome. Um, music all done by where can I find the Barbie Oppenheimer movie from day, two days ago? The one I just played, it's just it's called Barbenheimer. Barbenheimer AI trailer will get you to that. Tell tell him about the orb. Yes, the orb. Hmm, the orb. Don't you like the orb? I think wait, isn't this? Yeah, look. <laughs> mm, mm, wait. Oh. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. uh, battery's dead. Uh, it glows. <laughs> Not anymore. 
Because <clears throat> the battery's dead. All right. Pluto has moved into Aquarius, so it will be all tech. Oh, that's cool. My um, my my horoscopes lately have been insanely good. I'm a Taurus. I'm being impatient, though. I want shit to happen faster than it's happening. I want it now. I'm 11 years into my business. I'm ready for something to fucking happen. Let's get this fucking shit going. Nah. All right, you're funny. Thank you, Andrea. I appreciate that. Um, I wish you were my neighbor. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I fucking hate yard work. <laughs> so I like, I like reluctantly do it and bitch about it the whole time. I hate fucking yard work so bad. I hate it with a passion. Uh, <laughs> can't wait for your YouTube channel. I can use my YouTube to MP3 converter software to create an MP3. Yeah, that's cool. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out a way to do it. If anyone knows a way to bulk download Tiki Takis, I got I to... Gotta, what would be good is to have a, a producer, but... I'm not there yet. I'm just a I'm just a a low level TikToker. More alcohol, six or seven fingers, increased speed to maximum. <laughs> Riding that train, the faces always change. Yeah, I know the faces do always change. That's that's gonna get better. There's all sorts of cool white papers have come out about uh, consistency across uh, generations from images. Is that the guy from Breaking Bad? Oh, in the train thing, yeah. Erase your head, eat your heart out. Um, it will really be like that, though. Actually, you know, you know what's interesting. If you if you look at the experimental films, like the the Andy Warhol stuff, uh, the, that like the whole new New York um, film scene in the in the seventies and eighties, where it was all that sort of really weird weird ass, you know, fucking around with videotape and making janky shit, and part of the art was the jankiness of it, and it didn't have to make sense. It just had to be what you felt, man. Like, that's the kind of stuff we're seeing right now with this, with the generative AI, where where it's 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 fucked up and funky enough. What's going to end up happening is there's going to be some artists that get their hands on this that really figure out how to exploit the imperfections in a way that is going to rise above the noise. And we're going to go, oh, shit, that's so cool. That changes things. Um, we're going to start to see stuff like that. As, as, as more and more artists start to internalize these tools and the video making tools and the image tools, um, the fact that you can now start with an image in mid-journey and go to Runway ML and turn that image into an animation or into a movie. Um, yeah, the the... It's really cool. Like, like as I've watched certain artists make the transition into this stuff, the way they think about it is just different than how I think. I think about it. like artists think about this stuff differently, um, and that's going to be really, really exciting. We're in a bit of a transition period right now because the artists are all fucking pissed off because their thirty-year careers are getting flushed down the toilet because Mid Journey can make images. Um, in, you know, 10 seconds that, you know, usually take them a week or a month. Um, so, so there's a lot of resistance to it. But as, as artists get over the hump of that fear and start to internalize these tools, we're going to start to see some fucking amazing content being created. Um... Incredible. There are no rats. There are no rats. No rats. Scroll up. No. I answer every question. I do not scroll to the bottom just to appease the small people. Provite. I answer all the questions on my time, on my terms. That's what the Constitution says. If you can't accept that, there's the door. There are many other countries that would love to have you. This may not be one of them. Okay, carrying on. And scene. 
<laughs> ah! What platform that was that AI movie made through? That was probably all made using Gen 2. Um, or, um, yeah, probably Gen 2. Im- image to video or text to video. That's what that, that rap movie was made with all that stuff. There's a freaky one, a girl in a hotel. Um, did you make that movie? No, I didn't. He's back. Retro Punk, what's happening, man? You're probably long gone. I think I'm I think I'm probably now an hour behind on my comments, but whatever. Um, they have plugged them, it seems. Have you heard the AI from the dark web? Of the AI from the dark web. I don't know, what's it called? There's a there's a there's been two or three of them. I, I haven't heard one tied to the dark web specifically. If you know any more anything more specific about it. I might know something about it. And if not, I would love to know something about it. Um, is there a do anything now for Claude? I don't think so, but you could experiment with it. You could take, you could go look at the, the do anything now prompts from chat GPT and experiment with them with Claude. I, I don't know how, how strict their safety guidelines are or their safety guardrails are. Ooh, I want, I want that one. I will find it. All right. Uh, let's see. Been using ChatGPT to write Jira stories at work, and I've slowly let people know they love it. So I, I on China. That's there's a there's an article from Ethan Mollock called um, "Detecting the Secret Cyborg." So people u- secretly using ChatGPT at work is actually a thing. So so what Ethan Mollock says in this piece is that. These tools are incredible personal productivity tools, but they're too janky and shitty for corporations to really feel safe using them. So the companies are like, well, we're not really quite sure, or you can't use them, or we'll fire you. And the employees are like, these are fucking remarkable. And so the secret cyborgs are all these employees that are getting AI literate, but they're not telling their company about it. Because the company has policies like, if you use them, we'll fire you, or... Um, the employee doesn't want the company to know that what used to take them 40 hours, they can now do in like a day or so. <laughs> so why, why tell? Um, and what the piece talked about was that the, the, the companies need to get their shit together and, and make, a, make a, a safe environment for people to actively experiment with this stuff. I'm starting to see that. I'm doing a workshop right now for a big company. We just did our second week this week. We've got one more next week. Um, it's a big company, and they're taking this shit seriously. And they, they've created a safe environment using Microsoft technology, and they want to learn how to use it. And they've got their whole global marketing team in there. It's it's pretty remarkable. So, um, yeah, that's 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 wild. I mean, cool that you're using it like that. It's cool that you're letting people know. I think it's really smart to let people know you're using it. Um, to the extent that you don't risk your job, um, it will inspire them to use it and you will start to establish yourself as a subject matter expert on AI. And when the big bosses at some point say, we got to find someone who knows something about AI. Oh, I on China is good at that. You know, that'll be good for you. That's really cool. Your roll roll shirt into one of, wait, your role, oh, will shift into one of being provider of data literacy people will have easy access. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I think that was in, in response to um, the uh, business intelligence guy. Better learn it quick before you get fired and leverage yourself as an independent contractor for big dollars. Oh, yeah. You can make money with uh, GPT. Oops, hiccup. Hold, please. Thoughts on launching an AI-centric marketing agency for small accounts, 5 to 10K monthly billable. Do it fucking now. Um, I think you should do it. Here's what I would do. Um, Having started an agency and having tried to sell into agencies for the past 11 years with my current company, they have their heads so far up their asses right now. There is a massive, massive fucking opportunity. I wouldn't limit yourself to 5 five to 10 K a month with small accounts. What I would do if I were you is I would find three or four, um, people that represent kind of the major disciplines of an agency, an account person, 
um, a project manager, a technical person, a creative person that are all AI literate and hungry for AI and reinvent how you deliver work, how you pitch work and how you deliver work. Because what you can do with a small three to four person agency right now is you could go after accounts of agencies that are 20 to 40 people, depending on how good you get at it and underbid them so dramatically, like underbid them and over deliver that you'll, you'll start winning work from, from bigger agencies. Um, I think there's the, the opportunity right now for, for any agency that, that is AI centric from the beginning that, so, so there's a, there's a, uh, there's kind of this cliche in the agency world of like, you know, you, you, you can have it good, fast and cheap, uh, you know, good, fast or cheap, pick any two, right? You can have it, um, fast and cheap, but it won't be good. You can have it good and fast, but it won't be cheap, right? All that sort of stuff. With this AI stuff, I think you could actually pitch, what if you could have all three, good, fast, and cheap? I think there's a massive opportunity. So yes, full thumbs up, Mark Etel, NLMS1929005. By the way, 3.5 on the name. What's going on with the name? If there's a cool story behind it, or if that's some science fiction reference that I'm missing, then I'm an idiot. But I, you, you gotta, you gotta work on the name, especially if you're starting an agency, man. You gotta, you gotta get your name game down. All right, all things languages. I use AI templates to create avatar and speech over background video, but I can't find Spanish speech. Go to. What are you using? Did you use DID? Hang on. What? What? Did I? Ah. Hang on. I'm like, where's all the stuff that I had set up here? DID? Oh no, Wait, is it? Yeah, it's, it's DID. Hang on. Create video. Uh, hold. So if I do this in Spanish, um, hello, how are you? Will she say this in English if I type it in English? We've successfully generated your video. Hello, how are you? Yeah, so if you go to the, so if you're in DID, Go to the um, go to the language pull down. <clears throat> so there's, you know, there's English speakers from other languages, but then like where I just went is I went to Spain. And I wonder if they, they have Puerto Rico in here. No, I went to Spain or Spanish. What do I do? Spanish. Like here's Spanish United States. So let's let's see Spanish United States generate video. Oh, type your script. Uh, hello, how are you? Generate video. Hello, how are you? Yeah, that's pretty good. So. Uh, that's how you do it. That's how I do it in DID. If you're using 11 labs, I'm not sure how to do it there. <clears throat> What's that from? Not Hawaii Five O. Alright, whatever. ADD. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Whatever. It's, it's my brain. This is... <clears throat> I 
I'm at work, so there's that. Hospital lab. Oh, that's funny. 54 here, AI doc. Oh, cool. Nice. Gen Xers. Gen Xers for the win. I, I seriously feel like Gen Xers have a big advantage in this just because there's something about having, you know, the energy to still be in the workforce, the ability to understand the tech piece, and just having been on the planet long enough to see enough shit go down that when these things generate what they generate, like you can really quickly kind of filter through what's bullshit or not. That feels like a superpower to me, but I don't know. Boomers have been doing that finger movement longer. I don't know which finger movement. Uh, welcome, ladies and gents. Welcome to our host, the master of tickety talk, Kyle Shannon. Thanks, Emilio's wife. Damn right, and all those important words. If I wanted OpenAI's chat, GP, chat API to respond in a specific format, how can I guarantee that every time? So, <clears throat> okay. Let's go. Platform. So where I've gone is platform.openai.com slash playground. And so I'm going to flip to GPT-4. So I'm on GPT-4. Let me make this a little bigger so it's not so ridiculous to see. Oops. What's going on? Okay. Uh, I got to go one smaller. All right. Well, whatever. So I'm in GPT-4. I've got a temperature of one, maximum length of whatever. Okay. So... You you can you can either do this in the um, in the system message or you can do it in the prompt. But but you could do things like um, um, all right. Let's see. You're a social media manager that specializes in creating compelling social media content and descriptions, period. Um, and then I'm going to say, um, where, where's my, uh, format all answers as follows and then I put a colon and then I'm going to put um, I'm going to put brackets I'm going to put title and I'm going to put uh, let's see title I'm going to put dash bold see if that works I'm putting these in brackets I'm going to put title um, body and then I'll put hashtags uh, I'll put five hashtags so so I'm sort of telling it it's a social media manager and I want it to format all answers as follows so, and then I put title, body, and then hashtags. And we'll see if it does it. So now I'm going to say, um, write uh, me five YouTube descriptions of a video about a fat dog barking at people through a window. See what we get. What's going on? Why did it, oh that gave me that was no answer. Huh, that's weird. It didn't like that at all. Um so let me I'm gonna I'm going to kill this over here. Let me kill it like that. 
Um, write me five YouTube descriptions of a video about a fat dog barking. Uh, format the descriptions um, with these elements and line break line breaks and let's see what that does oh wait I didn't put, post them in there five YouTube titles and descriptions let me delete these, delete these, delete these. Let's see if I can get it to work. No, it didn't like it. It doesn't like these for some reason. Maybe the brackets were throwing it off. No, it's not working. I don't know. Yes, you can do it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to keep dicking around with this. One way to do it is um, it's really good at copying stuff. So if you've got something formatted the way you want it formatted, you can say, based on this example, write me 10 more, you know, that, you know, whatever the description is following that format. It's really good at, at, at um, following things like that. There's a way to do it like I'm doing it here, but it, it, it's... I, I obviously am not <laughs> I'm not on tonight I've never had to give me two asterisks as an answer ever let me let me get rid of the whole formatting thing and just see if it, it gives me anything yeah it's not this is what's wrong with this um, write me five tweets about a storm yes yeah, something's Something's weird with this tonight. Let me get rid of that. Oops. Yeah, something something's really weird with with playground tonight. Let me go try it over in Chat GPT. Um, write me um, five YouTube titles and descriptions that follow the format below. Sure, here you go. All right, this is working. Come on, focus. Eh, there you go, sort of. It's sort of focused. So you're getting, you know, title bold. So, so it actually, so, so I think that prompt was right. But GPT Playground, it looks like is is something's fucked up. They're they're probably fixing something over at OpenAI tonight. So, so basically, what I did here is write me five YouTube titles and descriptions that follow this format. I put bracket title bold body five hashtags, and so it created. Title, bold, body, five hashtags. So, I thought it worked. I, I don't know why Playground was so broken there. But, but yeah, you can do that. And you can also, rather than just, you know, typing a format like that, you can just paste an example and say, follow this example. Uh, 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 uh. There's also a cool thing you can do. I did this the other night. So, let me show you another cool thing you can do. Because this, this you could also do it. But you're talking about the API. So the API, the API you'd do it over in Playground when Playground's not broken. But you could do some version of what I just did. Oh, OneDrive is Microsoft. Okay, Google Drive is Google. OneDrive is Microsoft. Thank you. 
What plugin is best to connect ChatGPT to the internet? It's called WebPilot is the one that I would use right now. Seems to still work and is pretty good. The bear giving me my dangly lights. I love the dangly lights. I don't know. The bear, you're the only one that gives me the dangly lights. No one else gives me the dangly lights. I miss the dangly lights. The dangly lights make me happy. <laughs> uh, nobody wants me to be happy. I'm Pouty. I'm Pouty McPowdington. Mm. What's your favorite AI tool so far? I'm loving Google Bard. I'm, I'm flummoxed right now. Like, I want this list to be not seven. I'll tell you what I like about them. I'll tell you what I like about each of them. Um, and there are different times when I use them. ChatGPT, just the writing quality of GPT-4 at the official site is like nothing else. Um, but, but Claude is close. Um, and Code Interpreter at ChatGPT is fucking mind-blowing. Claude gives you a 75... Thank you, Bear. Appreciate that. Claude gives you 75,000 words, you know, memory. So, so you can process really long documents with this without having to do anything. You can upload five PDFs and just start interacting with them. It's, it's, it's really quite good. Bing is connected to the internet. It can analyze images. It can generate images. It's connected to the internet. It's GPT-4. So even though its safety guardrails are like way overdone and its GPT-4 kind of sucks, there's times I use Bing. It's pretty good. Bard used to suck so bad I, I didn't have it on the list. It's gotten better. It's connected to the internet. It can analyze images. It incorporates links into answers in a really elegant way, believe it or not. I, I can't believe it, how well it does it. Um, this is Llama2, um, labs.perplexity.ai. Pi, if you're trying to get anything done, is a awful pain in the ass. It's way too conversational. But if you put it in conversation mode, like the app on your phone and just start talking to it. I've been talking to it while driving. It's amazing. And then Poe.com has these bots that you can make, and you can also play with multiple. There's six different large language models you can play with in one tool. So they all have something interesting. Like, of all of these, Poe's the weakest. Pi is the second weakest. That's why I have them on the bottom and kind of smaller. But they, like, I don't know. I, this, this is a problem right now because... <laughs> Like, I want one tool that doesn't suck. I want one tool that generates images as good as Midjourney, has a 100,000 token or a million token context window, has something like Code Interpreter, is connected to the internet, elegantly incorporates links into it, and it would be nice if it were open source and easy to install. So... We're just at the shitty part of the era like like this is all brand new this is all brand new everyone's trying to figure it out like i don't fault any of these companies for not being perfect i feel remarkably appreciative that we get a chance to play with this shit um so wish i had a better answer for you what is my life come to geeking out on a friday night tell me about it <laughs> What'd you do Friday night? I don't want to talk about it. Why not? I don't want to talk about it. What, did you have a date? No. What, what's going on? Nothing. You weren't on watching that TikTok again, were you? Shut up! <laughs> what is it with you and AI? I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, exactly. All right, everyone should be using AI every day to get ready for what's next. For the next industrial revolution, that it is that, it's that, and you know, just like the industrial revolution, it's going to generate jobs that we can't even imagine right now. But before those jobs come, is the shitty disruption phase, <laughs> where all of our current jobs get completely upended 
and redefined and reimagined. And so it's going to be fucking painful. And it's here's the deal. And again, why this channel exists. It's going to be less painful for people that understand what these things are and how to interact with them. The people that are sitting on the sidelines, it's it's uh, it's going to be ugly. And it doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> and I think that's why I do these. I'm like, just fucking just fucking get curious. Just do it. Like, you, you know, we can joke about, you know, I, what am I doing on a Friday night doing this? Well, it's it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. Everyone will be using every day. Oh, yeah, we did that. Uh, -ba -ba -ba. When Apple releases their Vision Pro combined with their AI product, it's over. Yeah, Apple's Apple's going to do some smash and grab in this <laughs> In this in this competitive scene, these guys all think they're all fucking fat and happy right now. Apple's gonna come come along and go, "Oh, that's cute." Whack! <laughs> Here's a billion people using an intuitive product that's incredibly powerful, trans transparent, and magical. These guys are gonna be like, "But you can type words into ours." <laughs> We can write a poem about a dog. You want one? I can make it for you real quick. I just introduced my coworkers by having the bot write a short story about him chasing his cows with, with what? <laughs> with a drone. Then in Shakespearean style. Then Hunter S. Thompson style. He was impressed. Yeah, those kind of parlor tricks are great, great entry points, right? You can use those kind of parlor tricks and just... You know, watch people's eyes go wide, especially if they think, if they're like know it alls, and they're like, yeah, I heard of that Jet GBT. Yeah, I, I've used it. I was talking to a guy once, and I showed him, I, I had built this social media content generation tool. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I've used Chat GPT. I use it, I use it, I use it a fair amount. And we're talking, and I'm, he's asking me questions, and I'm like, well, let me, let me show you this thing that I just built. Let me get your thoughts on that. And so I ask him a few questions, I put them in a Google form, and then it emails him five pieces of social media content, like five tweets, a blog post, you know, hashtags, all that sort of shit. And he goes, oh, I just got that email. And he opens it up, and his face went white. And he, he literally went, he goes, I had no idea. He goes, I got to go. <laughs> he hung up on me. <laughs> you know it's like you know these things are these things are something they really are I like Apple better I need an assistant yeah Apple's gonna get the assistant thing right it's 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 gonna get there Apple AI plus Vision Pro game over yep I have a bot integrated with my iPhone which one um you just set off my Siri too <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Siri. <laughs> Siri. Uh, it, I mean, it really is amazing. Like, like playing with Pi, putting Pi into conversation mode in my car. Like, I just, I feel like for the last 15 years, I've been promised that AI chatbots were going to be remarkable. And for 15 years, they just sucked ass. They were just bad. They're just statically programmed logic trees that I always seem to break the logic within the first three interactions. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Like, they're just awful. And then something like Pi, it just works. She's pleasant. She's a little awkward. She pauses weird. She laughs weird. You can turn her into a him, like, <laughs> but knows everything, is connected to the internet, and can actually answer every question. Doesn't give you the, I'm sorry, does not compute. I'm sorry, does not compute. Like, after 15 years, they couldn't get it better than that? 
And you know they've got fucking 400 people working on Siri logic. Don't listen to me, Siri. Bitch. <laughs> but that's but that's the shift we're in the middle of, right? If you think about how you had to create chatbots for the past 15 years is someone had to take software that was designed to create branching logic trees and and create ever increasingly complex logic trees to anticipate every possible thing every possible human might ever possibly say and program in the answers and now you got a thing here where you just go hi and it just talks to you cuz that's how this shit works like like think about that shift like think about 20 years, probably longer, 25, 30 years of companies being built to solve the chat bot challenge. How do you talk to a thing that doesn't sound like a robot, that doesn't behave like a robot, doesn't behave like a machine? The Turing test, right? Years and years of people build, building these things using human logic and technical structure explicit static logic and then overnight these things go bang that's over that way of thinking is over that way of programming is over that's fucking remarkable and then think about every single piece of software that's built on that same Byzantine handcrafted logic that's been developed over 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, that overnight is irrelevant because of what this stuff does. That's the disruption that's coming. Back in December, I had ChatGPT write me an AI film script in the style of Steven Spielberg, mind-blowing results. Yep, super cool. Just saw the 80s movie War Games tonight. Here we are. I Here's a fun exercise to do. Go to... Go to uh, GPT for whatever um, have it give you a list of all of the have it make you a table of all of the science fiction films it can it can come up with have it come up with 20 science fiction films what are the technologies represented there and and you know where are we today like wh what's available to do today and like what's going to be here within five years it's wild it's like we're literally just checking off one movie after another. Yep, we can do that now. We can do that now. We can do that now. Back when I knew the writer's strike was upon us. Oh, interesting. Cool. Um, like they say in financial markets, the existence of aliens was already baked in. Yeah, that's, that's probably true. I still use my AOL email. Lauren for the win with the, the retro... Retro... Uh, Retro sexy email address. My Prodigy account was RPGB77. Oh, yeah. Played with Runway ML today. That's cool for landscapes. Not so good for faces. Yeah, Runway ML and faces is really disturbing. It's really bad. But, but again, the, the, you know, I, I feel like with the, with the video stuff, we've, we've just got, we've got a year to wait. This time next year, the video stuff's going to be amazing. Um, OpenAI got pressed by corporate. They are getting heavily sued right now. Yeah, I know. I know. It's the the fact that they haven't returned um, connection to the internet is astounding to me. But I, I think so. They, they cut this deal with the Associated Press. They cut a deal with Shutterstock. They have not cut a deal with Time Inc. So I th what that says to me is Time Inc. is because it was Fortune. It was Fortune magazine. Fortune Online is the reason that they shut down the um, connected with the internet stuff. And that's Time Inc. So I'm thinking that Time Inc.'s like, <clears throat> we have one shot to, to, to screw these guys. We have one shot to get the most we can get. And I, I heard a thing on Twitter yesterday, I think, that said publishing companies are asking for billions, not millions, from the large language model companies. So that's probably gumming up the works. It's probably hard to innovate when you have 
you know, big corporate lawyers, you know, on the verge of suing you out of existence if you don't give up 90% of your revenue to them, right? They're probably in those negotiations right now, so it's crazy. Uh, They had computers. They had computers when you went to school. That's an old joke. Y'all joker. That's so mean. You're trolling me. You called me old. I'm not old. What's that gray hair? Um, old. Hang on. I'll be right back. Ah. Oh. Alright. Well, that's not very focused, is it? Did you guys read all my shit on my shelves? <laughs> Did you have, you have conversations about all the shit on my shelves? Um, Zork. I remember Zork. That was good. I remember... Oh, it just jumped me to the bottom. Hang on. God dang it. God dang it, TikTok. Yo, dum dum, TikTok. Yo, dum dum. Um, let me see if we can get one other blast of people coming in here. Uh, if you're willing to share the live and hit the uh, hit the like button, see if we can get some more folks in here. It's sort of dwindling out, which is fine. I don't mind it getting smaller, but see if we can get some other folks in here. In here, yeah, yeah. You know, you know. What are you gonna do, man? All right, I lost my place in comments. I'm going to just jump ahead a little bit here. <clears throat> All right, the guy whose legs started moving, twitching on their own without the machine, learning to repair itself. Oh, wait, the guy's legs started moving, twitching on their own without the machine, learning to repair itself. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think it was a perfect thing, but it, but it was still like he's, he's walking now. Um, even though I've been in accounting and finance all my life, I'm a techie at heart. It's cool. And chord progressions, yep. Does Bard have an app? Uh, I don't think so. But I don't know. And it work in Canada. Some of these things are not available in Canada. I don't think Claude is available in Canada. I don't think Bard is available in Canada. I think OpenAI is. I don't know. Just go play with all of them. I don't know. Making shit up now. What did I make up? I might have. Seriously amazing time. It is. Great job. You've been live for 90 minutes. That was probably an hour ago. Um, February was when I first tried ChatGPT out. It keeps logs. Oh, that's cool. February 16th. Guess how I found out. I asked it. Oh, that's cool. Really? When was the first time I used you? Uh, let's see. When did I first use chat? GPT. Yeah. It didn't answer me. It didn't like me. Well, 
the first day I used ChatGPT was November 30th, 2022. I will never forget the day. I was like, holy shit! Because I dicked around with the, the playground for a couple of months, and I sort of got it. But I didn't quite get it. I mean, I, I got it, and I was like, oh, I could build shit with this, but I don't know what to build. And then ChatGPT came out, and I was like, uh, shit! I love its ability to facilitate facilitate my ADD brain farts exactly or inspiration all day long. Exactly. Like I'm telling you Dragonfly Academy. By the way, 9. 9 out of 10 on the uh, on the name. Good good good. <laughs> or al- wait, is it Oh, it's Alchemy, not Academy. <laughs> Dragonfly Alchemy. At 9.5 out of 10 for the Alchemy. That's good. Um yeah, the 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 ability to just take ADD brain farts and turn them into into stuff is amazing. That messed up sentence you read from me was an ADD sentence, excuse me. That's pretty funny. Uh, I'm not sure I have ADD, but I do know I need some Adderall. (laughs) It was funny when the the first time I was diagnosed with, with ADD was, God, fuck, it was 93 maybe, a long time ago. And... I took whatever the, you know, the fucking survey is that they have. The, you do the little test. And she's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you have it. And so she gave me Adderall. And I, she goes, I want to see you in a week. And I want to see how you respond. And she goes, you know, what what was your response to the Adderall? I'm like, it, it made me feel calm. Like, I didn't really know what Adderall was. I, like, I sort of knew, but I didn't really know. I said, it made me feel calm and focused. And she's like, yeah, it's speed. That's not how it affects most people. You have ADD. <laughs> It's like, that's why, like, I drink coffee at night, night and people are like, isn't that going to keep you up? I'm like, no. I just fall right out. Um, we can download Kyle into our subconscious while we sleep. Don't do it. Don't do it. Over six hours before I get off work. I'm not going to be here that long. I can't do it. I'm a Capricorn sun and a Leo ascendant and a dark Scorpio moon. Rachel, you know way more about this than I do, but there is a cool thing... Let me see if I can find it. There's a way that you can make ChatGPT actually display tarot cards. Uh uh uh. Let's see. Chat GPT. Oops. Chat GPT tarot card with images. Wait, that's. A prompt that generates tarot card reading. Okay. Chainbrainai.com. And this top middle one, if you show this prompt, you can copy this prompt. And I'll show you what it does. It's This is actually really brilliant. It's using Markdown to... So Markdown is... It's, it's like pseudo HTML. It's, ba- it's basically sort of rendering crap in your browser without actually making HTTP calls. Um, uh, Come on, focus, you dumb dumb. There we go. So, the way this... uh, Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, we're good? We good? We're going to be okay? So the way this prompt works, let me see if I can do this without defocusing it. Uh, I want you to act as an expert tarot card reader. So pick a random card, and then it's got it's got a URL. So it's basically got a, a wikimedia.org URL, but then it's putting right here. It says import the text from the cards URL down below. So part of the prompt is a list of all of the names of the actual cards in the tarot deck. And so it, it pulls, pulls that stuff in uh, when it picks the cards. So if I hit return. Boom. <laughs> Ace of Cups represents new beginnings. I told you I had cool shit going on. Opportunity and potential. It's a symbol of love, compassion, creativity, and intuition. It often signifies new relationship, be it a romance, 
Friendship, deepening of an existing relationship. Death, change. Misunderstood does not mean literal death. It symbolizes, symbolizes endings, change, transformation, transition. Definitely in the middle of that. Eight of Pentacles. Apprenticeship and mastery. Yes, that's what we're doing here. It signifies dedication, hard work, and the pursuit of perfection. Yes! It suggests that you are working hard to improve your skills. I am working hard to improve my skills. I'm, I, am, I am comfortable in my imperfection. I've accepted it. And I, 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 I embrace the uncertainty, uh, the unknowing of being a total incompetent boob. There, I said it. <laughs> uh... You may be learning something new or improving your skills. This is a time of personal growth and development, so embrace the changes and opportunities that come your way. Okay, I will. I'll do it. But isn't that cool? And what's cool about that prompt is it just gives you a shitty, like, three-card spread right there. But you could rewrite the top of that prompt. You know, Rachel, if you're good at, at this, all this stuff, you could rewrite that prompt to, to do whatever spread you want it to do. And it, w- it wouldn't do the physical layout, I don't think. Although you could, you could maybe have it put the cards in a table in a grid. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be fun. So go play with that thing. If you're still here, <laughs> I'm so I'm so far behind on the questions now. Um, I refuse to mow grass, Joker. I, you and me like this on that. I don't refuse because I don't. I'm the only one. I'm I am the chosen one in the family. Use repurpose.io. They will open Google Drive. Oh, and download your TikToks. Wait. Let me write that shit down. Hang on. Repurpose.io. .io. Oh, that's great. Okay. All right. Let us do the heavy lifting. Yes. We make it easy to automate your content workflow on post. Who? Oh, hair growth geek. How are you doing? I saw you. I saw you live today. You were live with like three other people. That was cool. How are you doing? Um, thank you for that. I will. That if I can make it easy to get the shit off TikTok and onto YouTube, I'll do it. Sagittarius here. Thelonious, I'm home. Welcome home, Thelonious. Welcome to the. Uh, welcome to the party. It's Friday night. <laughs> What, why would you go out drinking when you can be here hanging out on TikTok? <laughs> oh, God, what are we doing with our lives? <laughs> All right. The employee saves time. Um, I was submitting my school discussion board, but classmates had suspiciously same submission as me. Yeah, well, <laughs> there you go. Um, love your stream, but you are not doing the interactivity of the live stream a favor. Do you mean because I'm answering all the questions and not just dealing with the interactivity at the bottom of the list? I don't know how to do that well. If I had a moderator that could scroll for me and tell me when to respond to shit and like someone said something nice and laughed at that joke you just said, then I could do that, but I ain't got that. I'm just I'm just a lowly elder talk member. I I, I, ain't, I ain't I ain't got no the the AI learning lab. It ain't forty three person staff here. It's me and a dog. <laughs> uh, so listen, technocracy three or technocracy one. Um. You want to help? Do you know what you're doing? Because I don't. I read something about fraud GPT on the dark web. Oh, it generates effective phishing. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a shit ton of those out there. Um, yeah, I mean, our, the fraud stuff, the misinformation stuff, 
the personalized mis- misinformation we're going to start seeing. Like, don't be surprised if you start getting voicemails from people you know telling you that they're going to vote for a certain candidate. Or you're like, no, they're not. And you call them up and like, what the fuck are you talking about? They're going to be some, they're going to be some fancy ass shit going on in this next election here in America. Because we're America. Fuck it. And uh, we fight dirty. So when you got tools this powerful, there's going to be some dirty politics going on. It's going to make 2016 look like it was a fucking cakewalk. <clears throat> blah, blah. He must be using chat GBT. So lazy. So I re- reworded my submission. That's pretty funny. Seem the others in my class have discovered AI. Sorry, Thelonious. Yeah, what are you going to do? You know what you should do, actually? Is... <clears throat> This, this would actually be interesting. All right, Thelonious, here's here's the thing to do. So don't ever just write a... Whatever you're having ChatGPT write, don't ever just start with what, what you want it to write. Start with it um, telling you about um, some authors in history, right? So pick an author, like contemporary ones, right? So do, do ones in the 20th century so it's not such stilted language. And then just pick so you know Hunter S. Thompson or 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 Tom Robbins or you know so, someone you like, um, and then just have it write whatever you have it write in the style of that author. And every time you turn in a paper, choose a different author, and then and then see if see if your your professors pick up on it. <laughs> you could actually you could actually bury in the writing a reference to that author. <laughs> Like subtly, put their name in there somehow. I don't know. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> That's awesome. Best advice from a director of finance I worked for was undercommit and over deliver. You can do that with these tools. That the, there was a person earlier asking about starting an agency. I think that you could start an agency where you set your internal goals for the agency of a 30x improvement over what was done before. So 30 times faster. So instead of delivering something in a month, we're gonna deliver it in a day. That's your internal goal. And then you have a 10x um, increase that you promise to clients. So you say, I'm gonna deliver this 10 times faster than your current agency. So instead of a month, it's gonna be three days. And then you give yourself one day to turn it around internally. And if you fuck it up, you have an extra two days to deliver it. I think you could do that. So I, I, I think these tools would let, would let you build a dramatically better um, agency. What's D-ID? D-ID allows you to take still images and it synthesizes voices and then it makes the images talk. As in, I think it's like digital identity. Um, disassociative... <laughs> Identity disorder. Joker, you're like such a joker. It's like you're making jokes, like the comedy, the comedy jokes. Enough comedy jokes. Man, early Steve Martin was fucking funny. Book him, Dan. Oh, Hawaii Five O. Bum, 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 Anyone else used to play trumpet? Trumpet players? Uh, um, we are survivors, us Gen Xers. Yep, we are. We're bitter. We're the we're the forgotten bitter. Big wheels, shooting BB guns and fireworks at each other. <laughs> Played out in the woods, drinking from hoses. Yep, that's us. Good, good to have you back. Have you started your YouTube channel with your previous lives? No, I haven't gotten to it yet. But someone just gave me a cool tool. Repurpose. They're just gonna go get all my little ticky talkies and stick them on the YouTube, and then I can point people there. And then instead of having this, I'll just have my YouTube channel there, and I'll have monetization turned on, and like millions of people will flock over to watch an old guy talk for two hours <laughs> incoherently. <laughs> and I'll become a trillionaire from all that tasty, tasty ad revenue. <laughs> I'll get demonetized because whatever the hell I do here. 
Jarts. Oh, remember Jarts? They're illegal now. Etch a sketch, Lincoln Log, Silly Putty, all of it. All the cereals back then. Man, that was that was chemicals for good living. The cereals we ate. <laughs> uh, does telling AI to play a certain role work in GPT three point five? Yes, it does. It works in all of the large language models. So, what you're doing, it's it's not just tell it to play a role. That's one thing you could do. You could also so so you could say act as a social um, media manager, right? And then tell it to do that. You could also ask it a question: Do you understand um, how to write compelling SEO copy? And it'll answer that, and it'll give you a thing. What what you're doing when you're when you're providing that early context is you're kind of limiting the world of possibilities of what it can look at to just the stuff that you're interested in. So the way these tools work, they've been trained on all of the internet. So if you just say, write me, the way these tools work, they've been trained on all of the internet. So if you just say, write me a tweet, It'll sort of look across all of the internet that it's been trained on, see any of the tweets that were written, and it will do some sort of amalgamation and give you some super generic thing. It'll take all the shitty tweets and all the examples of bad tweets and all the good tweets, and it'll kind of mash them together, and you'll get some generic, shitty piece of crap. But if you say, do you understand how to write an SEO-friendly tweet, it'll sort of knock out the bad tweets and the bad examples, and it'll kind of narrow the world. So all of these things, the more context that you give them, so if you have kind of a long step-by-step -step conversation, that's going to give you better results than just writing sort of a simple little, like you would write in Google, a, a little concise prompt and expect it to give you a good answer. This is kind of the opposite. You know, give it lots of context, lots of um, boundaries for the conversation, and it, it'll get better and better. I want to know more. Uh, not sure about the micro part, though. I don't know what you're talking about. I can't get my plugins to work on OpenAI tonight. I noticed last night that um, someone asked me about real estate plugins, and there's none. And I know Zillow was one of them. And I, I'm wondering if they killed, if if, if they uh, if they got something going on with with real estate. Let me try WebPilot. Um, let's see. Um, what is storyvine.com? Let's see if it fires off WebPilot. It fired it off. Did it work? Yeah, it worked. I don't know. That was really weird that, um, that Playground was that broken. Let me see if it's still broken. Let me reload it. Um, write me a tweet. Yeah, now it's working. All right, they must they must have just been fixing something. Um, yeah, something's something's going on over at OpenAI. They're 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 probably doing some updates. I heard. I read today. That there's some new features out coming coming this weekend. I, I think I think I think there's some shit going on at OpenAI. They're doing some updates. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna wind wind some things down here. We're gonna we're gonna wind her down. I know we've been peppy. We've been excited. We've been talking. We've been talking. We've been well. I've been talking. We've been rambling. We, we've been talking about the AI. We've been talking about the, the, the career choices. We've been talking about profound societal impact. We're going to wind it down a little. We're going to start talking about puppies and horoscopes and, uh, and uh, candies and sweet, sweet cereals. Sweet, sweet, sweet cereals that, that drive holes in your teeth. That as you get older, they, they got to they gotta fill them with that, them newfangled white epoxies and they got they got to take out all the lead that they put in our mouths when we were little when we were sucking on the end of hoses because they wouldn't let us in the house to drink out of a out of, out of a sink that's we're gonna we're gonna wind it down and take this to a gen x happy place we're gonna go take a nap 
You would be a great voice actor in Hollywood, by the way. Thank you, Paul Veer. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think voice actors are actually going to be severely disrupted. So I would, I would love to do that, but these things are going to get really good. These tools are going to get really good, so I, yeah. Uh, I think they should add your voice as one of the possible selections on Eleven Labs. I made two Eleven Labs voices. I did one. I did one where I kind of talked like you know, sort of a, a more formal version of what I do here, and then I did one where I, I talked like a Pixar guy. Super excited. That was awesome. And they came out okay. Like what? What the? What the? Um, what the voice synthesizers don't do right now is they don't really get cadence. They don't get that things speed up and slow down. So everything talks at the same speed. It's like, take a fucking breath. Get excited once in a while. Slow it down once in a while. Actually, that's... What the voice actors should be doing right now is being hired as consultants for all these, you know, because because you, you got a bunch of fucking propeller head technologists in there going, we can synthesize the voice and we we just we uh, do it at this sample rate and obviously uh, we we bring in the sample rate and we uh, elevate that with the uh, compression and we do a high pass and a low pass and then uh, it, it sounds more realistic. It, 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 is, are there any human beings here actually listening to how this sounds? Well, uh, we have replicated human beings, and, and therefore it is, uh, it, it is uh, accurate uh, to within uh, 0 0.0027% uh, percent of uh, an accuracy model uh, that was created in 1972. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's why it doesn't sound like a human. You need a fucking human in here going, no, you nerd. I don't care about that crap. Make it sound better. <laughs> All right, why are they not interfaced with each other yet? Exactly, Joker. I don't know what you're talking about, but they should be interfaced together. Fantastic, Fri Fantastic Friday's geeking out. <laughs> I've always been curious. I've always been curious, Dave. So sorry, Dave, I'm afraid I can't do that. Uh, you said there were six different LLMs. There are seven. There are probably more than seven. There are seven that I think are worth your time chat.openai.com, Claude AI, Bing, Bard, labs.perplexity.ai is Llama, that's the meta models, Pi, and Po. They all have something interesting you can do. We are making plans to take over the world on Friday nights. That's it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it right here, right now. You should try to make a poem about a dog and chat GPT from the perspective of the dog. We could do that. Uh, ba -ba -ba I, use, I should use Pi in the car with my new Amazon Echo Auto device. Yeah, Paul. The, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, using Pi in the car, it, it was... I, I mean, listen, it wasn't fantastic, but it was some version of revelatory to me because it's just like... I, I don't know. I've just been so disappointed for so long with Alexa and Siri that to have something that you can actually have a full conversation with and then just fucking change the subject and go, you know, I want to know about the Mesopotamian War. A and it knows it. <laughs> you just fucking, you know, context shift all you want. And it's just like, sure, let's talk about that now. It's amazing. Glad someone never used Karen for the digital assistant name in the place of Siri. That's hilarious. Um, Google's AI built in hard code to fail the Turing test. Interesting. I wonder why they did that. They need to have better customer service robots. I just end up screaming at the phone. So, Rachel, I think, so I think customer service is one of the killer apps of this shit. I honest to God feel like they should shut 90% of call centers down and replace them with bots that answer the phone and actually know what the fuck they're talking about. You'd never be put on hold. 
You'd never start out with a level one person after 45 minutes that then puts you on hold for 30 minutes to get to a level two person, all, both of which are just reading scripts. Then they put you on hold for 45 minutes for a level three person who's also just reading scripts for you to finally get to a level four person that fucking hangs up on you. That needs to end. That needs to end. All of that shit needs to end. It needs to... You call and it picks up the phone and if it sounds stilted as a robot, I don't care. But if it goes, Hello, Kyle, how are you? The last time you called, we talked about this. Everything okay? No, it's not okay. I'm really pissed off because my internet sucks and Comcast sucks and Xfinity sucks. Oh, Kyle, I'm so sorry to hear that. Let me run a test on that right now. Bang, it runs the test. It appears there's some outages in your neighborhood. Would you like me to call you back in two hours and check? Yes, I would like that. Like, that's what customer service should be. And it, it can be done. And then that bot is also smart enough to go, Oh, Kyle, in looking at your thing, it appears that your problem is more complicated than I can deal with. It seems like the best path would be to put you in touch with an actual human. Would you like to talk to someone now? Yes, I would. Click. They put me through to someone who's actually competent, who has the authority to actually do something about my problem. That's what customer service needs to be. Yes! If someone's not building that right now, I'm very cranky about it. That needs to be built. And holy shit, is that a trillion dollar business? trillion dollar business and it's not that complicated it's all about um getting the data of the corporation so all of the shit that those individuals are trained on and all those scripts are written on all of that data can get sucked into a large language model they can embed that all put it into one of these stick a synthesized voice on top of it and get a giant fucking server farm that all it does is answer phones and talk to people for as long as they want to fucking talk. Yes, Rachel. What you said. <laughs> it's one of the downsides of kind of knowing how this shit works, works is knowing what it should replace. And seeing that the world hasn't replaced it yet. Like, frankly, this shit's been around long enough that that should have been done 10 years ago. I don't know who's got a fucking lobbyist in the call center business, but we got to fire that lobbyist and replace those call centers and those logic trees with these things. Like, now. <laughs> All right. No, he wasn't saying, wait, oh, I wasn't saying they didn't have computers when I went to school. Oh, I see. Okay. Kyle was featured in the Wired magazine on the shelf. That's true. I'm in that. Okay, Kyle took a break. Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's me and Champy today. Although Champy left me. Champy, not here now. Sad. <laughs> Champy's done. Champy's like, I'm not hanging out with you on a Friday night. I got chicken snacks to chew on. Friday night geeking. Thanks. You're welcome, Firefly. Thanks for hanging out. User, what date was my... F oh, oh, user, what date was my first message to you? Interesting. But that's not true. Oh, your first message to me in this conversation was August 4th, 2023. How about ever? No. Okay. User. When did I first interact with you? No, still not doing it. Oh, well, it's close. I think there's something in Poe that reads tarot. 
too, but I might be wrong. Yeah, I think there's a bot in there, but it, I I don't know. Oh, I haven't played with that one. I don't know if it actually shows the images. I tried to give away a deck of tarot cards to a girlfriend the other day. She left them. Witch poser. <laughs> That's cool. No grass in Florida by the beach, only sand. I also hum the Green Acres theme sometimes. Da 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 Green Acres is the place to be. In Paris. Oh, that's that's Gen X happiness right there. Green Acres. I used to watch that. I used to watch Gilligan's Island. Oh man, bring him, bring him. Bring him back the, the, the Gen X vibes. I like it. I like it. Make us a few mods, Kyle. It's you and Chip. Um, I don't know how to... If someone wants to reach out to me and tell me how to make mods, I don't know how to do that shit. I'm happy to talk about it. I think you're doing a fine job. I was scrolling and never left. Thank you, Joker. I appreciate that. Armed with the buzzing beast, Ethan took to the sky like a man possessed. His plan... HST style. Yeah, see? Those wild and crazy guys. Cusp cereals. Yep, cusp. Oh, yeah, cusp, wisp. Wait, quisp? Quisp? Remember quisp? Quisp! Quisp cereal is good. I was a Cap'n Cruncher. Cap'n Crunch is still around. It hurts my teeth now. Because <laughs> because my because my uh, my teeth are too thin from eating Captain Crunch in my childhood. Um, oh, Quisp cereal, yeah, flying saucers. Um, I got raisin bran as a kid. My mom wouldn't buy me sugar. Oh, well, raisin bran had a little sugar in it. Those those are little sugar bombs. Those little raisins. We're already there, Kyle. Um, yes, all those things, Kyle. Um, the nickname suits you, Silver Fox. You're welcome. Yes, it's a compliment. Thank you. Um, all the LLMs, the image, the voice, the video generators interface. Yeah, they're, we're going to start to see these things all <clears throat> all come together. Oh, the voice is going. It just it just <laughs> just fucking closed up on me. It just I can just feel my like it was like a, you know a curtain of snot came down and my two vocal cords folded across each other and it's like hot. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, yes. What are we doing here? This is the learning lab. We are learning. Learning, learning. All of the LLMs. Travel agent during pandemic. I can't even talk about customer service holds. Oh, my God. I can't even imagine. Uh, uh, user was accidental copy-paste. User is me. Oh, uh, wait. What? His plan was over the character limit. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Silver Fox. All right. Uh, I'm going to go, everyone. It's 11 o'clock here in Denver. I hope you had fun tonight. Uh, it was good hanging out with you. I, I really appreciate all of you. Thank you, David Gold. I love those worlds. Thank you so much. Um, Y'all are awesome. Um, I really do have a good time hanging out with you. I hope, that, hope this was uh, educational and entertaining. And uh, all that happy horse shit. So uh, I will see you tomorrow sometime. I'll probably, you know, be back right around this time or whenever. I don't know. You know, it's I ain't got no schedule, but I'm going to go look at what am I going to look at? I'm going to look at uh, repurpose repurpose repurpose.io and see if I can't get some of these long form things over to the YouTube. What might be fun is, you know, get all these things over to the YouTube. And then use something like Video or even ChatGPT to analyze the transcripts and find interesting clips within them. Um, that could be an interesting experiment. So, all right. Peace, everybody. Have a good night.